A thousand players, nearly a thousand players descended on the metro area this time last week to compete for the coveted Country Week titles here in Western Australia. Fourteen players remain in contention today and seven will walk away champions. Uh, welcome to our coverage here at the Osborne Park Bowling Club brought to you by AFGRI and Henselite Choice of Champions. Uh, I'm Clive Adams to take you through all the action today and I'm joined by Bowls WA President Doug Kelly. How are you Doug? I'm fine. I'm fine. And we're going to take you through all of this. The Pairs final is the one you are looking at right now. We have just got underway so um, we are looking forward to a wonderful match between uh, in the, the White Stickers, Mike Ford and Shane Judici Nan, Shane the skipper of that combination, as they take on uh, Greg Slaven and Tim Stevens in the Yellow Stickers. So if you if you're following from a bowl colour point of view, it's the blue and white bowls versus the brown and orange bowls should be enough. Uh, should be pretty easy to keep track of, and hopefully those boys are going to leave us a bit of a gap so that we can actually see what's going on. Well, a nice, uh, a very nice bowl there from uh, from Tim with his second bowl of this end and has snuck in there for shot and uh, holding one as they change over, having both played their opening bowls. And and the weather conditions at the at the moment, Clive, are quite a steady easterly, and the forecast is for it, of course, later on today to swing round into a southwester, but. You know, the forecast today used to get rather warm. Yes. They'll be quite appreciative of that breeze <laughs> coming across them. It's not over the top. The green's nice and true, uh, and they will adapt to it, which they already have. The green looks a picture, Doug. Yeah, there's, I've got an excellent green keeper here, and Ian Lilliburn, and some a great band of helpers, as we all know, who have, um, yes, and the members, of course, that have gone around and kept the whole place. And it's quite a good aspect looking across there up onto... D green, it's um, everything spick and span. So well done to the Osmond Park Bowling Club. They set the bar high and they uh, continue to lift it even further. Now Mike Ford, I wonder whether he might search a little here, but he's looking like he's really just over the draw, looking to perhaps get down to the jack. Well, he's done that. That's a very good bowl from Mike. He's uh, he'll drop in for shot there, uh, trailing the jack away from. Tim Stevens, good work. And maybe more than one. Yeah, a bit of a look for two, but uh, still now a bit of room, isn't there? So, so Greg will swing onto the onto the forehand, onto the wider hand there with that easily streaming across his right shoulder. So he hasn't had one out there, I think. So this will be interesting to see how he picks that, picks the line up out there. Good to see Fiona joining us. Uh, Yes, I did miss the BPL, unfortunately, Fiona, but there's another one coming up soon. Hopefully, uh, hopefully be able to get over there for that. And uh, when the opportunity to, came along to uh, jump in and do some commentary here, I wasn't going to miss that, Doug, that's for sure. Yeah, well, I'm quite privileged in the doyon of um, <laughs> Bowles commentary, so they tell me, so I've heard, so I know. So, yeah, quite privileged. <laughs> quite breezy at the moment with uh, an easterly blowing, so... Not automatic for these players to, to draw, particularly on the first end, but Mike looking to back up his good work with moving the jack with his first to drop in for another. Maybe just went too far, but I think the signal was that it counts. Yes. Might Sh be two or three at the moment. Yeah, I think so. Shane not giving much away, but of course there's still the skippers to come down as we see Greg go again to the forehand, playing the white hand. There's room. Still, still a metre to draw within, so we'll see how he goes. Good on you, John. Good to have you. And this is a very nice bowl. Yeah, you can see why he's a fine in the finals. Well played, Greg Slaven. Cuts it down, and he's actually hidden in a little bit behind the jack too, so very, very handy final bowl from Greg as the skippers make their way up to play their shots. Uh, Shane Judici Nan, quite a character, isn't he, Doug? Absolutely. Yeah. Pleasure to play with. He's quite the gentleman to go with all the the skill set that he possesses so you know there's he's quite a story he's um for 32 years of age he's uh he certainly does keep entertained and he's here we go he's reached reaching through there he's um looking for a little slice but carry through three meters through but he well, sinks his intentions big opportunity now for for tim to capitalize on that great work of of Greg and get another one close here doesn't want to sit alongside the blue bowl he'd love to just get another one just in front I reckon 
If he can just pass the uh, the front brown bowl, that would do enough to count and not set up much of a target for Shane. It's very balanced delivery. Jill Adam joining us as well. Another country bowl star over the years is Jill. Yes. She She'd be very familiar with the Osmond Park Bowling Club as well. Uh, yeah, and also Mosman Park. Yes. So she, um, yeah, great player. It's Jill. As was a son, I think played here, played at Aussie Park as well. So. And Judy Flanagan joining us as well. Oh, Judy, how's Judy? So, <laughs> Judy's the new deputy president of Bowls WA, and just it was just a great acquisition to get her on the board in the first place, and taking the next step. And and um, yep, yeah, we look forward to all the input. Certainly, well, Shane's stalking this set. one, Doug. Sorry He's to interrupt. He's very close, and look at that! What a great shot from Shane Judici Nan. He's made at least one, possibly two. That yellow bowl uh, of. Tim Stevens might be third shot, but we'll wait and see because there's only one bowl to play and we're going to have a score on the board in the first end of this match. Shane and Mike from Geraldton, Tim and Greg from Eton, so we've got the north and the south. We have. Now Tim just needs this one to hold around the front. Well, he's caught a little edge on the way in and that will do. So that will be one to the yellow stickers of Tim Stevens and Greg Slave and an entertaining first end. It was. They've picked it up. There's no feeling and searching for what the grass and what the wind's going to do. Their roll up, they've mastered it and I guess I know for the Geraldton boys this is their ninth this is the ninth game since they started on this journey back on Saturday morning, so they've had a few bowls under the belt when you take into account the singles and the fours. A thumbs up for everyone at home there, Doug. There you go. <laughs> and Luke Malone watching from up there in uh, up in the north of the state. Caratha Dampier region for Luke. So, of course, the live streaming from the Bowls WA perspective, it's something we've been really keen to do and follow up and get it to a higher level and higher standard. And, and um, so... This year in these COVID times, it was it's really come to the fore. We've been able to reach out into areas we were, haven't been able to get to, and of course, with the limit on spectators and the times they're in, it's um, uh, it's a bit of a, a bonus for us all. Yeah, we're beaming live into the Osmond Park Bowling Club clubhouse as well. So hello to everyone that's watching inside the club, because of course there's uh, strict limitations on who can be outside according to those government rules, which. Uh, whether you agree or you disagree, they're the rules. Oh, that's right. We mm. don't make them. We just have abide by them. <laughs> exactly. Not that everyone fully understands that, but that's how it is. Um, Doug, obviously, um, been a tough few weeks, uh, and our thoughts go out to Larry Bandy and family and uh, a, a fitting service last week um, to farewell Larry. And, of course, that's, uh, that's the reason you've now stepped into the role as... Bowls WA president? Yeah, correct. So, as per the constitution, um, I fill, finish his term out, which is, ends in July of this year, and then AGM, then it starts again. We'll elect a new president, and um, the, then we move on from there. So, Wonderful man, Larry, and a huge supporter of Country Bowls. Um, love to get out there and, and play in tournaments in country areas, and uh, just a just a huge supporter of bowls in general, and he'll be sorely missed. And I'm sure he would have uh, he would have loved to be here today, watching uh, watching this wonderful day of finals here for Country Week. Yeah, and and Larry got a lot, as he'll tell you. I sat and spoke to Larry lots of times, and he spoke of his successes and what he got out of bowls, and 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 what he didn't tell you about was how much he was giving back, and he would have continued in this job for quite a while. So sadly missed by us all. It was a tough few weeks, and or still is a bit, but. Yep, and as we see, Michael Ford draw within a foot, and with one and holding the holding the back as well. It's interesting, you know. He's very, very precise on on the mat, isn't he? The way his footwork, the way he lines up, how he prepares. He's just really a picture of concentration. It certainly is. And then at the other end of the spectrum, you see Shane, who just bowls with flair and. Just natural ability, just it's sort an, of the yin and yang of the... It is an interesting combination, isn't it, in that sense? Yeah. Oh, as we see Tim on the forehand, which is coming, heading towards the clubhouse, is the, the narrower hand, and of course with 
with Michael being behind Jack, he's obviously going to play that, but he's, um, yep, he's holding he's holding the back of Spole. Stuart just coming through with a question there, asking why they're playing 2-2-2-2, two, 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 uh, asking that most state events are now 3-3. Three, three. Well, certainly uh, certainly not in WA. We've never we've never actually had a, a state pairs, uh, an open state pairs that's been 3-3. Three, three. It's always been 2-2-2-2. Two, 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 two. And, and on that, we put it to at Country Week a couple of years ago about whether they wanted to change to 3-3 three by three for a couple of reasons. One, we thought maybe with the demographics changing and, you know, being the international and everyone else playing 3-3, three by three, but overwhelmingly, this is what they ask for, so this is what they get. It's good. I mean, I enjoy the 2-2. Two two. And Spike Jones letting us know that he's watching on his phone from Meriden Rock having a picnic. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll be hanging out for Maddie France later on. In yes, the day we've got we've got singles. We've got the singles final coming up uh, after this after this clash. And of course, the singles final is between um, Maddie France, as you mentioned, Doug and Peter Cole from Pinjarra. And then we'll wrap up our coverage as we see uh, the last bowl there as they change over um, the uh, fours final, which is uh, John Sharp, Matt Mitchell, Doug Wright and Stephen Tufney to take on Ian Cartledge, Darren Kelland, Stan Hunter and Tony DeBello. That will be uh, the final match of our coverage today. So, um, Haley pointing out mixed mixed pairs. Yeah, so I was talking about the dis- the, uh, the gender disciplines. You're right, Haley, but there has been, the mixed pairs has been played in the 3-3 format. I mean, that's the, that is the beauty of pairs. You can sort of play in in various different formats. I mean, we know everyone loves a roll-up in 2-4-2 type format, so you get to play every position. And, um, and we certainly see a lot of the 3-3 game played at the at the national and international type level now. And of course, the recent BPL is basically a 3-3 a, a pairs format with the added addition of substitutes. Mm. And, and I think from Bowles, perspe- Bowles WA perspective, and we've got yeah, country director Ross Warburton and behind us as well, and it's um if it's what they want, it's what this is what we'll maintain. So if they ask for the change, well then then we'll go there. But in the, the day, they own the game, and yeah, the, the, any format's good. All right, Mike Ford looking to capitalise on his second bowl, and this is his third bowl of this end, and looking to capitalise and jump in on that jack with another. Doesn't look doesn't look too far away. Needs to pull up. Well, he's done that on his own bowl, but he's at least uh, a, well, probably a bowl and a half closer than what his uh, his previous shot bowl was. Yeah, it was the classic one in, one out. Good options here for Greg, just to make sure he gives it a chance. Sit the bowl, a little trail of the jack wouldn't hurt. A little bit of a raffle if he trails the jack. Looks to have just done... Uh, too much with the line, and it's just going to drop away. Mike looking to drop about a metre and a half on his last bowl and drop in on the jack. Even for him, a little nudge of that jack could bring in the orange bowls of Shane Judas in there. It is a bit windy, yes, there's uh, a fair bit of wind blowing across the green as Mike's well he was probably on a better line he just didn't quite adjust the weight so as we change over one to the white stickers the, the wind's just moved around all just a little bit and I think that may have um, contributed to that bowl sitting on their running surface that bit longer and drifting through to the back it is the one thing that's difficult for you to appreciate uh, watching on the live stream is exactly what the wind's doing so um, <laughs> Haley uh, Haley pack a very complimentary of your uh, commentary voice Doug thanks Haley um, I do appreciate that coming from Haley <laughs> she's had a ripping year by the way state singles, I had the pleasure of watching that that was um, yeah, she's a real tiger isn't she, she really knows how to, when she gets on a roll is just hang in there and, and get the job done and of course um, I'd love to go to watch a few roll ups between her and Cody <laughs> yes. they would, there'd be no, no quarter given there I'd suggest. I'll give you the little tip that Jasper's not far away <laughs> either he's got a good little delivery on him as well, don't worry about that I've seen some videos. Yeah I did see these follow through <laughs> and he's looking down the line <laughs> 
Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Wayne Rayner watching as well. Wayne, one of the uh, big fans of live streaming coverage. We know that. Ex Beverly boy. All right. How's the weight on this? This looks to be a little under. Needs to push. Not quite going to make it, I don't think. Green is running well, though. I think he uh, noticed the other ones that seemed to get there a bit quicker than they needed to. Well, this sets up an opportunity now for Tim to play up underneath that last bowl. Yeah, this might adjust his weight a bit here. Jack out the back of the rink's not bad for the Eaton combination. It looks like he's still on draw weight, if that. I thought he might have searched a bit more. So did I. Mm. Especially, I reckon it's three out there, if he can poke that out the back there, but... I'll tell you what, it wasn't a bad effort. His weight was perfect. Out. Second shot now, so that's, that's important. So Shane, looking to find two feet on his last bowl. If he wants two feet, that would be enough to uh, to get in the count. He has got a little bit more on it. Is it going to get down for him? Don't think so. So it looks like it will be uh, one back the other way, and we're locked away at one apiece after two ends of this match. Now, I can let you know that the players, um, both teams are using, well, effectively within their team, the same bowls. So um, Taylor SRVs for the Geraldton combination and Greenmaster Power for the Eaton combination. As we remind you, we are brought to you by Hanselite, Choice of Champions. <laughs> and, um, and the win, they're not foreign to these guys, you know, both from coastal towns, so... Oh, yes. And I know, <laughs> coming from the wheat belt, um, yes, we do get, it does get windy out there, but these guys see it every weekend, albeit a sea breeze, and the sea breeze is pretty second-hand by the time it gets to where I come from, but... <laughs> Um, so that's something they, they just wouldn't even notice at the moment. They'd think it's just a zephyr compared to what they're used to some days up at Geraldton. We've got a call for an umpire, have we? No. Nope. They were already out there ready to go, but no, nope, they've said no, nope, we're all good. Or are we? Oh, we are going to throw a tape on it. I think we're going to find this is long enough. I'm backing long enough by about a foot, Doug, based on what we just saw there. So one apiece, it's been a, 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 a good start to the match. Uh, we're asking the singles will be next up, Wazza. Singles next up, and then the fours to finish. And while, while they are throwing the tape over it, no, oh, you might be right. Miles yeah, long miles long enough. So We can quickly tell us about the new regional bowls manager that has come, on to, come yeah, into play. Yeah, great, uh, great to have Troy Canane on board. Of course, we, uh, we thank Steve Unsworth for all his hard work in the, uh, in the southern area of WA. He's in the role for around about four years, and uh, uh, he's decided to move on, and we've uh, gone ahead and appointed Troy Canane. He's been in the role now for about three weeks, <laughs> and uh, loving it. He came out and did a, a school visit with me on, uh, on Wednesday. We did some school clinics out at... Uh, at Holy Spirit School, just uh, just out there in Floriot. We had uh, kindergarten, the year ones, and the year twos. And the region he looks after now, Clive? So everything south of the river in the metro area, and then you sort of use Great Eastern Highway as a, as a line across the state, although I do cover Bruce Rock and, and, and uh, a couple of the clubs that are just, just south of Great Eastern Highway. Um, but there's a line there. There has to be a line there somewhere, and we have roughly uh, roughly 100 clubs each to uh, to service. So certainly, if you're looking to do anything in your club, um, whether it be some marketing, whether it be you want to try one of the um, wonderful programs like Jack Attack, or or get the school involved in Rookie Rollers, uh, uh, or you just need some help with some IT or some planning, get in touch with uh, either myself or Troy and. We'll be more than happy to come out and visit and steer you in the right uh, in the right direction. And Troy, of course, plays for South Perth. He does. Yep, very accomplished bowler in his own right, and and a very tall man. Yeah, well, we've we've, we've, we've gone with the height because uh, look, I'm I'm pretty tall, Doug. I thought, but not tall enough. Well, <laughs> we did notice that the average height of our RBMs is now six <laughs> two. So no, uh, a good man, Troy. Um, very, very experienced in the in the financial world, and um, but certainly his knowledge of bowls is uh, is excellent as well. So 
Um, certainly take that opportunity as a club. Big state we've got, so it, uh, it can be hard to get to everyone in person all the time, but we've, we've got these wonderful online tools as well where we, where we can help as well with Zoom meetings and all sorts. So certainly it doesn't matter where you are, you've got access to your regional bowls manager team. So the leads have left a bit of room for the skips to come yeah, down and play their seconds role. It's the loosest of the uh, of the ends we've seen so far. So the wind has picked up like, since the since we started, or well, since the roll-ups, and you'd also expect that perhaps the green changes a little bit in those first few ends, just as rolling comes off a little bit. And but credit to Osborne Park, sea green we're on here at Osborne Park, and it looks an absolute picture. He doesn't. Not a blemish on the green. And Ian, the green keeper I mentioned earlier, Ian Lillybone, would have been um, been up early with his band of band of helpers, and and uh, really has got it looking smicko for Great him. Great shot there from Tim Stevens. Yes. And a toucher. And just holding that one out a little bit from Shane, but has got second shot. Tim looking to add to the tally. Well, this is the key, isn't it? When you've nailed it with one, nail it with two. Well, Looks to reach. be a bit quicker, yes. And needs to land now. Well, he hasn't quite done that, but still. Changes over, holding one as our skippers make their way, uh, sorry, our leads make their way up to play there. Second at two bowls for this end. Yes. Um, so Shane and Michael have been bowling together for six or eight years together as a pair. Got to a semi final, um, and of course now final and they uh, will see how it pans out. But Tell you what, you never miss Shane. When I'm up there and visiting Geraldton or Wanthella or wherever up there, he's always around. <laughs> he's right. always there for a practice or or just showing his face, showing his character. I tell you what, this can get past the front. It's not a bad addition here from Mike Ford. That is a very, very good bowl. Just had to work his way around the front. He so, did it with precise weight. So Greg's going to maintain the backhand and see if he can just change change the setup there. He's only been bowling for 10 years, Greg, he tells me. Retired school principal down from the Australian region. Interesting that uh, Greg chose to stay on the backhand there. Probably might have had a better look at the jack on the forehand, but just choosing to try and get another one close on the more familiar backhand side that he's been playing. Robbie Tiller wishing both teams good luck. Former... Well, he says he's got privilege to, to be fortunate enough to get the name on the trophy, and it's a uh, a long week and a lot of walking. Uh, yes, he was. They, last year they got their name with his yes, father. I'd absolutely, and that was a yeah, great bowler, is Robbie. Well, Mike needs this to run. Not quite going to. So, I think we might see a change of hand here. I think. Or, well, I think we might see a change of weight more so than a change of hand. Mm. Sticking with back end, it, it just looks a little closed off. That's the only issue Absolutely. with the wind blowing across. And it's going to drop away. I just think that's a tough shot. Just He hasn't had a look out on that wide hand much, so... No. They... There is a chance to land the bowl or trail the jack on the forehand, whereas on the back end, you're really pushing the bowl onto the jack itself. It, uh, We'll see whether uh, we'll see whether Tim sticks with that or has a look on the other side. Well, Tim, but Shane, Shane to go first, of course. Easier choice, of course, for Shane. 
there's a gap to play through and then sit the yellow for second. Well, he's just not going to get down. That's sort of my point with yeah. Yeah. with the Eaton boys playing that hand. It's just hard to get down. Tim, of course, has got two, so he's got a chance to correct. He can get a feel with his first one. He's going forehand. And he's going to go forehand. Very, very good action has Tim. Very balanced on the mat. He's just dropped under, so it's his first look out there, though, so he'll learn from that. Still really would just draw weight. I'm kind of surprised he hasn't given that a bit more of a chance than that. I think it's, his catch is a foot behind, so yeah. he's only got to touch it, and Green probably running at 15 and a half. I don't think it's changed much since we took off this morning. So it won't take much contact to shift it a foot, although that will be annoying where Shane has parked that one. So it's two and a half foot, two foot in front of Jack. Yep, sit the ball out to the call. Yep. So he'll be looking for an... I think he's, he can afford to have another metre. There's a little bit of a raffle if the Jack moves. It's sort of uh, a, a good mixture of bowls if the Jack moves. They do own the back. There we go. So he's got a he's got a little bit more weight on it, uh, but it is going to hold on the outside. So it's going to be another one scored to Shane Sinan and Mike Ford. They leave it. They lead two one. And of course, Country Week brought to you by our wonderful partners at Afgri. buy a John Deere lifestyle tractor or ride-on mower, you join the John Deere family. And that means more than just owning a piece of our equipment. It's the dependable support of your local dealer, backed by a global network dedicated to innovation and quality. Call into your local AFGRI equipment today. We've rolled out the green carpet for you. Big thank you to AFGRI for their uh, wonderful partnership with Bowls WA and bringing you Country Week and of course Hence the light, choice of champions bringing us the coverage today. 2-1 lead to our Geraldton combination of Shane Judici, Nan and Mike Ford over Eaton's Tim Stevens and Greg Slaven. Well, interestingly, well, interesting, yeah. yes, Mike is choosing to go to the wide hand. Now, that can happen sometimes when there's a strong cross breeze. You can decide to go with the hand that you know is going to turn. It'll be interesting to see how Mike handles this first bowl. His, his weight's not bad. Well, it's a pretty decent first bowl. Well, it shows the class, mm. class of him. But the other guys, certainly within their capabilities as well. So, Although Greg is going to stick to the forehand. This is where it can get interesting in, in games where one player decides to make the change. It can put pressure on the other player to say, well, do I go with them? Do I do I stick with what I'm doing? And those decisions can, can have a big impact on the match, but it looks like Greg's done a pretty good job himself. Fair choice. <laughs> Great bowl. <laughs> Got to be happy with that. It's just the perfect response to a good bowl. It's another good bowl. Just short of the jack, only a matter of... Uh, about an inch and a half, probably, just short of the jack. Let's see a few of the other finalists have arrived. You can see Maddie France off in the distance and John Sharp. Yeah, there's some talent sitting over there in the in the crowd. They'll be in action in our coming matches, the singles final next, and then followed by the fours final. So we've got a few characters in the lineup today. Clive with Matty France is quite and quite the quite the character as we all know, and defending champion defending, too. Yeah, and he, he's, um, it, that'll be an entertaining singles game because he plays he plays an aggressive style. He uh, he doesn't hold back. Now important bowl here from. Greg Slavin wanted it to pass. You're on the jack with the first one. Make sure you passed with the second one. 
good discipline leading. Yeah. For some for someone's been bowling for ten years, I mean I suppose by then you know whether you've got it or not, but uh looks like he's got it. He's certainly um ahead of the curve when he knows the role that he has to play and he's just done it beautifully. So and Maddie and then of course Maddie Mitchell's no slouch either when yes. we get to the singles, so that will be an interesting few hours. Manny Mitchell playing three to John Sharp in the fours. Mm. Pretty pretty, uh, pretty decent combination that. There's skipper and three, both with extensive state experience. And their lead, uh, Doug Wright, or Ginch as, we, as they call him, uh, he's been very impressive on the mat. So, But, you know, they're up against a good combination of well that have... Ian Cartledge, a very experienced player in his own right to earn the right so you can to get there and, and they have so we'll be detained there as well so that's a ripping ball here so he's tipped the, sh the shot bowls tipped over and and they sit there for two there's a good look at the jack for Shane now go oh, forehand trying to peel it off underneath yeah well, he's got a bit of a landing area there as long as he just gets under their own bowl in the front uh, he is following it so he must be in the area he was right in the area well he's got the gap oh. Well, he's definitely cut it back, I would think. It's probably only one now, but... A good call by Greg. Well, it's a, good, it's a good setup for the orange and brown bowls of the Geraldton combination. They might be down one, but they've got a nice little, uh, nice little catching area just in behind the jack. And it's hard, very, very hard for the Eaton boys to cover that. Now, choices, because Mike changed hands with his first two bowls. Does he come back to the forehand now looking for that trail? Does he back himself on the back end? And, I mean, the trail's on either way. Interesting conversation with him this morning about what makes you two gel and bowl so well together. And Because, uh, you know, they're a bit of a yin and yang as far as characters go. And he goes, it's the trust. The trust in each other's ability to do what they've got to do. So there probably was very little discussion. They just cross over. You do what you have to do, but we'll <laughs> we'll see. He'll, be, so, no, he'll go forehand. I just noticed Mike bending down to pick up the bowl, and then he looked down and went, "Oh, that's not my bowl." <laughs> 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 All right. So the forehand it is. Looking to just be underneath his own bowl in front, and look for a little nudge of the jack. Well, I think he might have underdone that. Oh, I think the mat's too far back for that weight, Clive. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> plenty of room for Greg Slavin to still get round that last bowl. It just wants to get something out in that area of, of where the jack can move on the forehand. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but he just needs to get it in the area so that he's not three down if it gets trailed. So the line's good. He just wants it to pull up any t anywhere in that space would be very handy. It's gone just a little bit too far for what they would have liked. So still this trail on for Mike Ford needs, let's say, four feet on his last. And I'd be very surprised if he doesn't reach. Okay, close is the call from Shane Judas Nan. He's very close. Well, look at that. He's got the jack. It'll do for one. one. One's a signal from Shane. Yeah, just bounced around a little bit for him, but it's still a great shot. But now, all of a sudden, there's a little front toucher on here for... Uh, for Greg Slavin, he gets a little front touch, he can make three. There's two blue bowls sitting behind the jack, just waiting. So there's a foot of room. Well, he's very close. They're looking. Needs it to get down now. Just held on the outside. Hmm? And Change decided it's two. <laughs> Of course, the um, the Eaton uh, Club Doug has undergone some transformation in the in the last uh, 
in the last six months, 12 months? Yes, and, and Ross will be able to enlighten us more when he has has a say later on. And, um, yeah, you've been, as Ross is nodding his head in the background here, and, yeah, he's had a fair bit of involvement and watched it from, from the from the early days through to what it is now. Fantastic to see. You know, a club that's worked hard over the last five, six years to really, uh, well, not reinvent itself, but to, you know, this is a great shot. Needs to pull up now. Great shot from Shane. And perfectly placed to uh, avoid that trail for for four, which was on for the Eaton team. A little bit of a contrast in surfaces that uh, these teams would play on as well. Of course, Eaton with their synthetic greens and... Uh, the Geraldton guys still on grass up there. No, so I think there is one um, gold fleck at maybe one thala. Someone maybe will. Oh, there's two. Know. There's two, two at one thala. Two at one thala. But uh, these guys are Geraldton, so yeah. But, yeah. We, but we'd play on. Yeah. On it as well. And Another great shot. Fresh you know, here. Brilliant. Brilliant. He's kept him in line too. So uh, there's one of our. Side on microphones has taken a tumble just to give you an idea of how much wind there is. So not easy conditions, but they, um, they're handling it well. He's looking. He hasn't given up on it. Looks to be just carrying around the outside. Wouldn't mind of landing that, didn't. So it's effect. going to be potentially... Well, if Shane was right when they changed over, this could be four shots, Doug. Yes, so the tape's out. Greg's rolled out two. Well, and he reckons he's given the three, three to be rolled out. So we'll just have a look at this last one. He's looking. Anyway, so I think Mike's trying to work out which one he needs to measure of the oppositions. Um, he's trying to work out where their closest bowl is. He'd know. He's got a, a, a very sharp eye. Yes. Having played against him, he uh, the light he if he thinks he's got it, I'd back him in. That is going to be four shots. So it is a six-one lead to Shane Jettison and Mike Ford. Of course, a big trail of the jack by Mike Ford that set that up. Didn't quite land exactly where they wanted to, but he still made it two. Shame with two perfect draw shots to add. 6-1 after four ends, and we are playing 14 ends. And so, Clive, as we're putting the mat down, the BPL and Cody Packer, exceptional performance by Cody. Yeah, look, the, um, they were so close to finals as well, weren't cool. they? Just, uh, just basically, it actually came down to a measure between Adelaide and Brisbane on their rink. Uh, they needed the measure to go one way for the game to go to a tiebreak. It went the other way, and that was uh, that was the Suns out of the finals, finishing sixth. But um, it was a it was a great performance by uh, and great to see Cody getting over there and being part of it again. Of course, we know he's been part of the Australian Jackaroos trials as well that have gone on in the last week. So um, all the best to to Cody out there, and we'd love nothing more than. Uh, to see a West Aussie uh, representing at the highest level. Of course, we've had Christina knocking on the door in the uh, in the women's, but we haven't had a men's representative for uh, for quite some time. So, um, to Cody, we certainly wish him all the best, and uh, we'll see what the uh, see what the Perth Suns are going to do for the next one, which comes up in May, Doug. Yes, just around the corner. So, yeah, we'll see the um, the legislation and at the time will probably dictate to us a little bit but we've certainly got some talent here and and I know I was probably a bit rude not mentioning other two people in the Perth Suns but I guess we were a bit one-eyed and we can't see past Cody but he um Ray he, Pierce and Dawn Heyman of yeah, course, of course. Doing and a wonderful job representing the Suns once more yes well a little bit, uh, a little bit unfortunate there for Greg just running into Mike's first bowl and that'll uh, force a change of hand now for Mike. Uh, holding one, looking to add. This will be 
country pushing the breeze has swung swung around it's um well, a little bit more north in it now is it he has to push into it and then it'll help finish him off so well, he's done very well yeah, touch of class here now the bpl is an awesome awesome event uh doug it was uh it's it's hard to know what to do with yourself when you're not over there as part of it that uh, it certainly uh it was a challenge for me um but uh it's such a wonderful event uh, we get to see the best of the best taking part, and if it's not uh, if it's not the sons that we're watching, it, it might be a massive Orion Best to Drive or a Aaron Sheriff Precise Draw. Yes. Ben Twist was so sensational this time around. A wonderful event. And you played in it how many times? I had four cracks at it for the sons. We made finals twice. Um... Didn't quite make a grand final. We uh, we lost to a Scotty uh, Scotty Thulborn drive, Jack in the ditch for six on a power play, in a semi final. That hurt. <laughs> it still does, don't? Still does. Obviously, I can <laughs> hear it in your voice, mate. <laughs> so here's a great reply. Oh no, sorry. This is Shane, and he's drawing inside. So yeah, maybe holding three. ball from Tim. Well it is, I mean it's a 14 end match so at 6-1 behind these next two ends become important quickly for Tim Stevens and Greg Slavin. This one's going to drift away underneath so you know the four shots is probably a four is probably bigger in a 14 end game than it is perhaps in an 18 end game just for pure length of match. Now I don't. I wouldn't mind him playing just a little bit more weight here and just trying to open this up a little bit early. It looks a little closed up. Yeah, he does need to change the shape of the head. So, with another two bowls each to come after this one goes down, it gives us something they can work with. He'd love nothing more just to get down onto the jack and just squeeze it a little. He's very close. Exceptional bowl here. Well, Great he's done ball. well. That's made a big difference to the way that was sitting. So, still one down, but much more inviting for uh, for the Eden combination to play to. And Greg's got the back bowl, so there are options. So they both had a good look at that, trying to work out the best way to go about well, it. Well, it's interesting because there's equal representation. There's sort of equal representation on the jack, equal representation just about a foot past the jack, foot a foot and a half past the jack. So both teams will be looking to try and just get another one. I think for Mike it's just a chance to try and get another one, maybe just fall off that yellow and get another one in there. Play underneath the blue in front. Or even his own inside shoulder. Yeah. Well, it's a great effort. Up to his own. Well, it is good. It, it is good, but it Just is... Just don't know how much of a look at that that the Eaton boys have got. Well, there you can see... It, it'll force call from yeah, Tim. It'll force a change of hand and a change of weight. So the call from Tim was getting there with a little bit, just looking to rake through, trail jack, sit some bowls. Greg's looking. He needs it to get down. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh. Well, he just caught the front. Well, a little do. Creative. <laughs> He's wobbled his way all the way in for shot, I think. So I mean, look, in fairness, it wasn't far away without no. the little scrape off the front. He was going to be very close anyway. Yeah. So, reaction from Michael will be what? Grunier Casper, thank you. Gary 
remembering my bowl at South Perth, put the Bunbury boys out of the uh, <laughs> BPL Cup. Of course, BPL Cup is on again. Uh, it's interesting you bring that up, actually. BPL Cup, we are looking for host venues for BPL Cup rounds once more. Doug, I know you've played some BPL Cup games. Yes, I have. It's a good fun day, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And it's a good good kick start to the season. The format format is <laughs> really scrape good. scrape off that front bowl. Yeah, it's getting its money's worth, that Yeah, orange. at the very least, you get a fun day's bowls, and at the very best, you get a trip You get a trip to the BPL to be part of uh, all the... All the Wonderful fanfare that goes on over there. You get to mix it with the best and play for a BPL Cup title yourself. So if there's any clubs out there that are interested in holding one of those events, um, just head to bowls.com.au and go to the uh, events section, National Events BPL Cup, and you can register your club to host an event. I know Gamaling and Northern hosted oh, yeah. them. We're yeah. in my neck of the woods, and mm. exceptional jobs both those clubs. Fantastic. Gamaling uh, have hosted now two or three over the years and they've all been tremendous successes all all full full events uh, and a great day everyone loves the format now that's going to park up in a very good home perfect perfect so one up to the yellow stickers or the if you prefer the blue and yellow bowls of tim stevens and greg slaven from eaton so, will Shane just burn one, or do you think he'll run through this and change the shape? I think we're going to see a bit of weight. He's certainly reaching, and he's right in behind it too. This is very close. What's he got? He's got a clean. Brilliant. What a great shot. Nudge the jack, holding two. Uh, what a great bowl. Having said that, there's still the opportunity now for Tim to play a very similar weighted bowl, get the jack back through the gap, and could make as many as four at the back so, of the ring. So Eaton hold three at the back, about down, or down two, you think? Or did the orange definitely, def definitely two? Definitely two. I'd suggest this is going to reach. Just want similar weight to the weight that Shane had, and he's got that. Now... This is looking a little tight, but what's he got off the front? He's passed right through without touching a thing. Would love that to stay in bounds. And hasn't. Just gone. He's got it. Still on, still on the back three. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll just finish this as we come through. So, Shane, will he cover? Do you think it's in his makeup to cover, or he'll draw another one? I think he has to go the, I think he has to go the cover. He'll cover? He, well, he can't drop. He can't just leave a shot on for four down. Cover John? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, says John Trotter, who played with him in the. He's going to join us shortly. So it really doesn't matter where this goes, it just needs to be somewhere around the back and in amongst the back blue bowl. Well, he's gone a long way. And it's a handy bowl, but it, he probably would have preferred that not to quite go so far. This would be an easier shot with more weight than he's been called on. But there's three up for grabs if he can just punch it back six foot. It's four if his bowl finds its way through with it as well, Doug. So let's see. It's on its way. He's on a better line. Needs it to hold on now. Well, he's caught the edge of the front. Jack's gone back, and it's a bit of a raffle for shot, but I think it'll be... The bowling gods didn't smile on him as they deserve to. He played that pretty well. I think it'll be one to Geraldton. It is one, one to Geraldton, and they lead at 7-1 after five ends. Doug, you're going to leave us for a little while. Thanks, uh, thanks for your time, and uh, we'll probably catch up with you later in the day. Absolutely. All right, a 7-1 lead after five ends to Shane Judici, Nan and Mike Ford over Tim Stevens and Greg Slaven from Eaton. As we welcome John Trotter from from Geraldton into the into the coverage, I'll just adjust your headset for you there, John. There you go. Thanks, Clive. Thanks for having me on. No worries, mate. Good morning, everyone out there. Well, uh, been a big week, mate. It has. Yeah. Yep. The eighth day now, so the boys will be be very tired, um, and they're going all right. They're off to a good start. Looks like Shane's appreciating that you've dropped into the commentary <laughs> box. <so. Yes. laughs> <laughs> we'll look for some. Uh, we'll look for some dirt, maybe, uh, maybe later on. But uh, uh, tell us about. Obviously, it all started last Friday morning, about this time last Friday morning, when uh, 
uh, as I said at the top of this, you know, a, a thousand players, nearly a thousand players to make up the, the country week field that all come down here. Some some looking for a title, some looking for mateship and to catch up with old mates. And it's just a wonderful feel, this event, isn't it? Absolutely. Lots of different reasons for the boys coming down. Yeah. Um, it's mostly about mateship and getting down, playing some bowls. Yeah. Um, a lot of luck's got to go your way through the week to, to get to the to the pointy end of the season. Um, but, yeah, obviously these these two are very very good and consistent um, they've applied themselves well had a really really good week fun as well a few beers along the way and um, yeah that's that's paid off for them and Mike Ford delivers once more right on the front of the jacks been an interesting little battle between the two leaders in the match the been a little bit of uh, hand switching going on and um, both have generally done a pretty good job perhaps Mike just with the just holding sway with the with the real bowls that have been right on the jack. Yeah, since he's since he's changed to the white hand, he's um been nailing them. So that's definitely the right call for him at the moment. The narrow seems to be a little bit tricky, um, a little bit fluky on the wind. So get a gust out there, um, it'll it'll push it a bit wide. I'll tell you what, the players don't won't mind the breeze being there because it's going to get hot if that <laughs> if that breeze drops away. But uh, and of course. Coming from the uh, from coming from the Geraldton area, no no uh, no stranger to wind up there. Absolutely not. This is just a nice little breeze for us, so it, it won't be anything that the the boys haven't experienced before. <laughs> Eaton, of course, a coastal town, so there wouldn't be any uh, any surprises to them either. As Greg looks to make a, a bit of a correction on his first, he's still going to just trickle past. So certainly advantage. Uh, Mike on the changeover holding two good shots and 7-1 lead, 14 end match it's, uh, you know, the next I said it before, but the next couple of ends become really important because uh, for the e for the Eaton pairing they need to they need to bridge the gap now. Yeah, get a couple of get, get a couple of shots, um, close that gap and um, get themselves back into the game obviously the Geraldton boys will be, be looking to consolidate their lead and keep applying pressure John, tell us about your uh, your history in the game because it's uh, very much in the family, isn't it? It is. Dad's Dad's a keen bowler. He's in our fourth side as well, and we um, we play pairs together as much as we can. Um, I've been bowling. I think this is my seventh year. Yep. Um, and yeah, Dad and Mike Ford. Mike Ford's helped me out a lot with my bowls, um, especially with delivery. He's got a got a great mind for technical aspects of. Um, both deliveries and the game um, he thinks a lot and he's um, been very kind with his knowledge to me. Joel Leeson suggesting uh, this shall be interesting could find uh, yourself a career change here. <laughs> I don't know about Do that Clive, I might leave that all up to you buddy <laughs> <laughs> Alright, opportunity now for Shane once more played played two very good bowls in this direction last time on this end when uh, when the Geraldton pairing picked up four does need this to push a little well, he's done pretty well would love nothing more than just to tuck on the front of that no real addition to the target and another one in the head so as that wind rips through once more. And how did you go yourself, John, throughout the week? I made my section of the of the singles and got got knocked out in the first knockout. Okay. Um, Dad and I got through to the 16 in the pairs, I think, which was really good. We've um, never never made it through the first knockout of the pair, so um, obviously disappointed to to get knocked out, but um, very happy to make it that far. And I think we got to the final eight in our fours with with Mike and Shane. So. Overall, a very good, good, good week, Excellent. and um, hopefully the boys can keep going and put a put a little cherry on top for us. Shane Judici, Nan, and Mike Ford made their way into this final with a win over Mark Wannenberg and uh, George Gray. That was uh, that was their win, and that was uh, was a comprehensive win, 23-3 for them to come in. So obviously been in uh, in good form, and for Tim Stevens. It was uh, a win over uh, Wayne Smith and John Park from Northam. What was that scoreline? That was uh, a sorry, that was a 13-12 win. So uh, a very tight encounter in that one.
Low scoring. Well, the foot is down at the moment for the Geraldton duo, holding three shots here all over the jack. We haven't seen a lot of aggression from the Eaton pair. He's called for a couple of metres here from Greg. Trying to land the bowls, move the jack. He's very close to moving something. Well, he's got... Well, he's got one of them out. Certainly helps, but I don't know. The target's not quite as inviting now, John. No, he's he's left it... He, well, he's narrowed it up a little bit. He's, his bowl's on the wing, though, so he can probably use that up a little bit. Drift across. Um, hope for... That, I mean, those, those two are counting anyway, so come off that blue. Um, hope for a bit of jack. Okay, so Mike on this wide hand, as we discussed, he's played it pretty well, actually. Can be an interesting one, to decision to make early in a match when you're just finding one hand a bit tricky and decide to go the other hand. You take a bit of a risk, but Mike's in the area again here. Wants to get down to the blue. Well, that is perfection. Yeah, great bowl, 40. Perfection. Yeah, so they are a little bit susceptible if it, if the jack goes right back, so that's what they'll be trying to do here. So a similar weight, I think, is the call. Looking to disturb that front bowl, get it onto the jack and pop the jack out to the side. It looks to be under, yes. So, well, this is big right now. It's three shots at the moment to the Geraldton pairing. If they can get a three here, they'll take a, uh, a commanding nine-shot lead. And it'll be a long way back for the Eaton pairing, but Tim Stevens has got two bowls to do something about it. So I dare say Shane would be looking to cover, cover across the back here, um, just in case that jack does go back. Mike standing back there waving his arms, making yep. sure he's, yep. uh, he's got the message. Ford, he's got the jazz fingers out. <laughs> I don't know whether my good friend from uh, from up in Geraldton, in Jeff Ellis, is watching, but if he is, uh, Jeffrey, and I'm pretty sure he'll be watching because he's a, uh, a good friend of Mike Ford. I know they play a lot of bowls together. Absolutely, and they practice together. They, they do a lot, a lot of practice together. Um, Forty's, Forty's always out on the green, having a roll up, and um, trying to refine his, his technique and action and grow his confidence. Well, more weight it is from Tim Stevens looking to disturb something. He's just on the outside. He's got one bowl out, so he reduces the count to two. Shane's first bowl, obvious skipper's bowls of this end, did cover quite nicely at the back. So, what does he do here, John? Does he try and draw another one, or doesn't really want to make a bigger target? He doesn't want to make a bigger target. He's holding two. Um, there's probably a little spot right in the middle, and you can see a, a line straight through the jack and carry straight into those those two blues and the and the yellow for for three. So I think he'd be trying to just just beat his his bowl and rest in the middle of those. Well, he's done well. Yeah, good home there. He must have heard you. <laughs> Landed it perfectly where you said, so... I think... I think we don't have much choice but more weight again here for... Tim Stevens, even if it's... It might be just to bump the jack. He may play... He's really got choices. Well, he's in the Mine's area. Looking okay. What's he got? Oh, he's got one of them. He needed another one left. He's getting one at a time. So it's Run out uh, of bullets. yes, one more to the Geraldton combination of Shane Jettison in and Mike Ford. Eight one now the lead after six ends, and uh, well, that is five ends on the trot after uh, Tim and Greg scored first. It's now five ends on the trot for an eight one lead after six have been played. Yeah, good consistent bowls being played by the by the Cheriton boys. Eaton boys are playing pretty well as well. Um, 
Geraldton boys have just got, a, got the upper hand at the moment and hopefully hopefully for our sake, or Geraldton, Geraldton Bowling Club's sake, they can <laughs> keep going. You're allowed to be a bit biased, mate. <laughs> yeah. You're from Geraldton. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you have that. Um, don't know what you've seen of uh, of Peter Cole and Matty France throughout the week, but they're coming up in the singles final. You got a tip for us in that one? Oh, I think I think Peter Cole, um, his his object will be to to not draw too close to the jack because Matty France has been running everything off the jack from what I've he's seen not all shy. week. He so is you, not you get, shy to attack. Get too close and that that <laughs> that bowl or the jack's going. So um, leave a few gaps and and draw within a foot. Um, and he'll give himself a chance, but I'd, I'd pick Matty France to, to go back to back. And I think we're going to have an entertaining uh, fours final as well with John Sharp, Matt Mitchell, Doug Wright, and uh, Steve Tuffney to take on Ian Cartledge, Darren Kellen, Stan Hunter, and Tony DeBello. So that's a bit of a bit of a, a South versus South encounter that one, but uh, should be an entertaining match as well. Absolutely, both sets of fours have been playing really consistently all week. Um, my tip would be Emu Point for the win for that one. Um, it's I hard think, to go past yeah, Sharpie and, and Matty in the same rink, isn't it? It's, yep. it's a pretty powerful back end, and, and then Doug was saying how well the front end's been playing as well in that rink. Now, can Eaton strike first? Well, he's caught the edge of the jack and sent it straight onto the, uh, onto the Mike Ford bowl, so unlucky right in the area. Yeah, good bowl, no result. Mike Ford, as we alluded to earlier, one of those guys with just a very, very deliberate approach to how he goes about it. Yep, I tell him all the time he's a he's a robot and he just he just does the same thing over and over again. And how things going up in Geraldton, mate? Uh, going well? Yeah, good. We've got got in the in the pennants this year. We're we're sitting um, one and two with two of our factions at the moment. We've got uh -huh. two weeks of pennants left, so yep. um, hopefully we can keep 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 getting it done and um, go into the finals with both of us with a double double chance so and the beautiful grass greens at the Geraldton Club going good they are they're, they're rolling very nicely um, we're the only ones left with with grass greens up there now so um, yeah we're very much appreciative of all our volunteers and, and greenkeeper for for looking after them all right can Greg here repair the work he did with his first interesting staying on the backhand so he needs to climb around the front, he's done that well, he's positioned well uh, certainly good position bowls but once again we just find that you know, Greg's got the position but Mike's on the jack and uh, uh, albeit a little unluckily from uh, from Greg's first bowl but uh, it's been a little bit of the pattern yeah absolutely uh, the first half of the yep. match Yep, the one thing that Eaton Lee's doing really well is making sure that he's not dropping short with mm. his second one. He's getting behind, giving, giving themselves a chance. Shane's nearly jack high with that one. A little bit on the wing, though. He, he said, oh, I'll let it go. I don't know whether he was talking about the wind in terms of it just got held out. Or whether he's talking about that he wanted to pass the jack. Probably a bit of both, I reckon, yeah. Clive. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of love coming through for uh, for you uh, on our comments. As uh, that's a great shot from yeah, from involved. Tim Stevens, flicks the shot bowl off the jack and uh, now sits for one. There's plenty of love coming through for you. Uh, Jim Taylor's loving your work. Mark Adams. G'day, boys. Richard, A Richard Attrell. And Stacey Pardo. Well, Stacey Pardo's my, my lovely fiancé. Oh, right. We're getting married next month, so g'day, love. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Stacey. Great to have you watching. Great effort there, but it's sailed a bit wide, so I'm not quite sure who's got shot. I'm not sure we've seen a signal, so it would be close between the uh, the orange bowl and the blue bowl, perhaps. Probably favour the blue. 
Yeah, it's very hard to tell from here, but... Hope for the Eden boys' sake they're holding one. Well, certainly from a neutral point of view, we, we love to see a close game. You're probably not, uh, you're probably not looking for a close game, John, but... Uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> Stressful enough as it is with, with oh, the, the seven-shot leave club. This is a bit cute. Stacey's come back with hi, baby. Oh, dear. <laughs> Stacey, send those messages to his phone, will you? All right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike Ford looking to just drop inside here. He's just going to carry around the outside. Even a little touch on that orange bowl probably would have been handy. Yeah, knock it in. Just a metre of weight, that's all. Line was very good. Anthony Vernon with a great, uh, with, with some nice comments there. Great bunch of boys from Geraldton enjoyed playing against them in the fours. That's what Country Week's all about, isn't it? The enjoyment. And Absolutely. And you, from and you, down there at Harvey. You, you get to get to play with a whole heap of really good blokes. It's um, it's a real pleasure to come down for the week and meet new faces and um, make new friendships. And, and Watto from Latham's uh, asking you to go and visit at some stage... Uh, John, <laughs> looks like they're going to look after you. Okay, what I'll, yep. I'll make it a mission, mate. I'll come. I'll come down and say good day. <laughs> now, can Mike find that little bit of uh, correction here? He needs it to push all the way. I think his weight's pretty good. Just needs it to finish off, and uh, yep, you're spot on, John. Well read. That is uh, that is the shot bowl. So we now know is at least one in favour of. Geraldton once more. So 14 ends, so this will mark the halfway point of the match at the end of this end. So Eden have got a few options here in this head. They've got two two wing bowls to work off. They've got a few, or well, a couple couple straight behind the, the jack, so any movement of the jack's going to be good for them or they can, they can rock off either either wing for the shot. Just overdone it by the look of it. Still not a bad position there either. If Tim now decides to play the forehand, he's got a couple of bowls to trail the jack to. Yep, got, got a nice little patch there to, to drag it into for Run for off three. the shot bowl and a little yep. trail perhaps. So where have you had the pleasure of uh, visiting this week, uh, John? Where about where you're... The majority of your games out to Mount Lawley for the, for oh, the yes. singles. Oh yes, new synthetics. Yeah, very nice, nice day out there. They looked after us very well. Um, went down to Coburn for for the two days of the fours. Under the roof there, were you? Under the roof. Yeah, we were very happy to it's be out of the setup. sun for two days. Yeah, and great setup. It sort of reinvigorated us a little bit just being out of the sun. So another that great was shot good. there from Shane. Yep. Oh, very good. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful complex down there at Coburn. It was a lot of years in the making, was that? It was, Coburn was probably talked about changing location for about 20 years, and it finally came through, and uh, it's just a wonderful setup there now. Yeah, I was very impressed with it. It's, um, yeah, absolutely awesome. So I think we'll see forehand from... Are we going, are we going backhand? Certainly been a desire to play the backhand from the... Eaton boys, particularly in this direction. So it's underneath, looking to sit or trail. Just needs to hold on now. Well, he caught the outside edge. I think it's one to Geraldton as it sits. But Shane's been in the area a lot. Wouldn't be surprised to see him add another. Just needs us to hang on now. Oh, that's probably gone too... No, it's definitely gone too yeah, far to count. Mm. But the orange is the call.
big bowl right now. He can find a way to beat that orange bowl. Tim Stevens needs it to get down from a wide line. It's not going to. So we'll just check out the score here. It is another one to the Geraldton combination, and they lead it after seven in uh, after seven ins, nine shots to one. We thank our great sponsor in Afgri for all their work they do in bringing us Country Week bowls here in WA. When you buy a John Deere lifestyle tractor or ride on mower, you join the John Deere family. And that means more than just owning a piece of our equipment. It's the dependable support of your local dealer, backed by a global network dedicated to innovation and quality. Call into your local AFGRI equipment today. We've rolled out the green carpet for you. Certainly have rolled out the green carpet for uh, for uh, for the bowlers in the country. Uh, AFGRI looking after looking after the wonderful. Uh, Wonderful country week bowls and uh, and just country bowls in general. So certainly, uh, well, Doug Kelly, you're back. I'm back. <laughs> the um, yeah, and just on that AFGRI, it's a three year association we're having with them, and and uh, we're really looking forward to it. They they put a lot into the country, and it's really we're really happy and welcome that they um, they're reciprocating and um, you know just putting back in like they they have in this financial matter, and you know great sport for them to be associated. So many so many of their clients play bowls so they will be getting fair reward for the money they invest into the game and we do appreciate it and thank them while you're appreciating we also appreciate john trotter for uh, joining us there um he did a good job and he had plenty of he had plenty of uh, fans coming through and you've got your own fans coming through as it's well right. doug i noticed caitlin tyrrell said she appreciated your commentary whether she's just making sure you know being president just making sure that you looked after or, yep it's fair bowler and a state bowler <laughs> this year. Hopefully, we we're really looking forward to uh, Caitlin debuting. You know, she's been around the mark and in great form for Aussie Park and hopefully for the state as we get towards the side series in October. We're going through trials at the moment, of course. Sunday is another uh, another state trial. So, yes, I probably got ahead of ahead of the game a little bit there for Caitlin, <laughs> but but I'm sure if she fulfills the potential and keeps on doing what she's doing, that she'll be in amongst it. So uh, Mike Ford has has really taken the reins here, uh, Doug. Over the last few ends, he's he's just been nailing the jack. And whilst Greg was a little unlucky on the last end, he just chipped the jack over to Mike. Um, Mike's two bowls have generally been, you know, of the standard we've seen there, if not better. And for Greg, he's just had trouble stopping him a little bit over the last few ends. Yeah, well, doesn't quite possess the experience. Um, you know, ten-year bowler, so you know he's sort of honed his game down a fair bit. But with Michael, he's 40, 40 years of experience, and he did multiply that by twenty pennant games a year the other day, and yeah, so he's in amongst it. But that's well, the difference. Well, what you see there is just Greg deciding I can't keep going so far past, and he's overcorrected as a result. And we we all know how it feels when you can't just can't quite find that weight. And you go well, and you let it go, and you go well. That's got to be short, and it is. <laughs> you go yeah. well, you know, where's that middle ground? And that's uh, if Greg can find that, they can still work their way back into this match. But at nine-one, halfway point, it needs to happen now. And would you be swapping hands if you were Greg? I think I'd be tempted to. You know, give yourself a fresh start. Um, you can change hands, and you've got you've got no demons going on in your mind if you do that. And you've got four balls. Correct. They obviously, you know, they're no slouches. You don't get to oh, a no, final of Century Week without having put together some very good bowls. So they've got it there. Ooh. Well, that'll work. That works. A little slide off the front there for Tim. No, certainly not. Um, and they've been around the place. It's just uh, the the big shots, and I mean, it's really only been one end. Um, a four, a four to the Geraldton crew. Every every other end's been one shot. So there's not not a lot in it. It's just all going one way. Yes. And another good bowl here from Shane Judas in there, and he's been right in the area. He's just going to drop under the jack. So now here's an opportunity. Opportunity for Tim to drop another one close. He's going to switch to the back end. Got a nice guide there of those Geraldton bowls to beat. 
and his own bowl coming up in the uh, form of the blue bowl of Greg Slavin. A few bowls to go on this end, but a multiple would be about a good timing to do it would be about right yeah, now. A two, maybe a, maybe a three if they can sneak one. Well, onto the blue, just round it. And falls in. Falls into count, so at least two. Don't think he quite did enough with the blue to get that up into the count, but... It's a start. He's certainly left the head better than when he found it. And so we just should mention the umpires. I know we can't pick up and scan the cameras around, but the officials have been so important right from the start of this Country Week journey. And, and today we've got Sue Hogg and, and we've got Vicky Eva. Oh, they do a wonderful job. Absolutely. The two of, the two of them uh, get over and uh, are a part of a lot of the Bowls Australia events as well. I know that they are very much appreciated for the work they do over there and I know their professionalism is, is very much acknowledged. Yes, right. They're of a very high standard, so we're just lucky that we have got them in WA. So it doesn't go unnoticed, especially by me, both country country ladies, as we know, and um, they are somewhat synonymous with a couple of really big clubs in WA and good bowlers in their own right. Mike just yes. coming up short yeah. there is Leslie Haythorn thwaite Leslie from Kalgoorlie, uh, asking who's in the singles final. It'll be uh, Peter Cole from uh, Pinjarra, Leslie, taking on... Matty France, our defending champion from Meriden. So that's coming up next, and then we'll have our fours final to complete our coverage today of the AFGRI Country Week finals here in WA, here at Aussie Park Bowling Club. And this is just going to pull up for Greg. He's got his line. It's just finding that weight. So Michael just searching, searching for a bowl, and I think it looks like he's going to play that backhand. Is that just behind Jack, or is he not? I think the call from, from Shane was go forehand. back to the forehand. Back to the forehand. I guess they're looking perhaps a little trail. A little yeah. trail that way would work for them. Or sit the yellow. He's just got out deep, and uh, there's no reward for deep there with this cross breeze. So Greg Negan, a metre and a half on his last ball. This will be for three if he can sit it up. Yeah, it's just that betwixt and between feeling for him at the moment. It's just uh, maybe a change of length. If they can get, if they can get the, uh, if they can get an end, and get the jack, that's going to be their opportunity, isn't it? Maybe change the length a bit, stretch it out, perhaps. Yep. Yep. It's a bit of a freer swing. Sometimes that's, uh, sometimes that's the, just the tonic. Yeah. The, especially Michael, who's just in the groove at the minute. Yeah. Just gonna throw him off a little. Break it off. Mm. Now, Shane is also just on that widish line, so no changes. A big opportunity now for for Tim. Now, his last bowl in this direction was on the back end. He's got a bowl in the way there now, so he'll come back to the forehand. No problem, Leslie. Hope everything's going well out there in Kalgoorlie, Kalgoorlie Boulder region. Now, what's Tim got? Doesn't want any jack. And he's missed that. Needs to get down to his own. Well, just wow. passed it. Last ball for this end. Two down. Last ball for Shane. Last ball for Shane. Yep. He's followed it down and he's well, looking. Is he clearing the front? He's done that. What's he doing? Well, that is a super <coughs> shot from Shane Judas in there. Perfect ball. He's trailed it at least two, maybe three. It's still there's still a target for and Tim, but it's going to need a big bowl, and it's going to need a big bowl right now. He can trail it himself for two or three. So solid weight. He's coming through the front. Well, he's got a couple out. May only be one now, I would think. They may look for a second. He's played it well. 
Oh, just another the Another score of one, Doug. And it's 10-1 ten, ten now after eight ends in favour of Geraldton. They've won seven ends on the trot after the first end went the way of Eaton. So, speaking to Shane this morning, he was talking about how st how he started bowls. And he's, well, he's 32 years of age, so um, compared to me, he's just new in the game. And I'm not sure actually how old he was when he started, but he said his early coaches were a gentleman called Merv Reid and Alec Watt. And Merv Reid was a bowler here at Osborne Park. And he also, he actually, I was talking to Gordon King, he actually also coached Gordon King. So, you know, success rate of one out of two is not bad. Oh, that's harsh. As King, he just fell off his chair inside. But <laughs> um, no, he's a great bowler in his own right, is Gordon King. He's a good man, is Kingy. He's a good man. He's great for any club, especially this one. So they didn't get the mat and didn't get to change it. So, oh, that one, will they call an umpire? Well, They're I don't, looking. I don't know that that's going to be long enough. I'm not even sure they'll waste the time with an umpire. No, no there it no. goes. Goes straight back. And, well, here we go. This is an opportunity now for Eaton to get themselves back in this one, change it up. We'll see. We'll definitely see a longer length. There is no question about that. Now... Really important that Greg executes this jack roll well. 10-1 after eight ends. This is just a significant end for him. Got their opportunity. Well, he needs that to push. Go. Not quite where he wanted it to be, but I'm sure he will have a bit of a feel and be okay. Mm. Not he, he, he wanted that longer. That needed to be near the Needed near to be the, the extreme team. change. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure, was I? Was I asking if Matty France is going to don the thongs today, like yesterday's semi? I'm not sure. Um, can't quite see his feet from where we are, so <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to get back to you on that one, was I? Now, Mike has nailed it again with his first bowl, so that's where that bigger change is what they were looking for, but uh, didn't quite happen. Now Greg will look to make amends. Now well, he looks like he's missed his weight with this one. Good encouragement from his teammate. Keep working hard. <laughs> Jed suggesting that Matty France has very big feet. Oh, I just can't see him from here. <laughs> <laughs> he did don the thongs yesterday, we, we noticed. and Well, look yeah. at that. Well, a great set indeed. Mike Ford has, uh, has put on a leading exhibition here, really. I mean, he's, he's really been... He's really had an end where he hasn't had at least one within just a few inches of the jack. And it's probably told and then it's been Shane that's been able to come up with a couple of nice little trails of the jack and nice little add-ons when he's uh, had the opportunities and that's where the 10-1 lead has come from yes he's his process and repeatability just comes to the fore especially in a big game like this where <laughs> great little exchange from the two Geraldton boys as they cross over I think it's greatly appreciated by any skipper when your lead puts two bowls within a foot and pretty much lines them up. Yep, absolutely. When your primary job, uh, when your lead's playing, is just a clap. You know it's uh, you know it's going well. Uh, Shane's going to put another one in the area here as well. Just going to pass. Perfect. Very nice home for uh, for his first bowl of this end. So he's got a feel for the feel for the weight of this one. So uh, Tim really needs to get in amongst this here. Of course, works at the Department of Ag or DPERD, as all the country boys will know him now. Showing my age a bit there, Clive, calling him Department of Ag. <laughs> well, he's very close. Classy. What a great shot that is. Tim sneaking in there, not quite sure whether he's made shot or not. Uh, Mike having a look. Still got one. Here's a call from Michael. But... Uh, 
still a great shot there from Tim. That's explaining the, op the options to Shane as he comes through. I'm sure this one will reach. Is a sit the yellow, touch the jack, push it out. They've got the catcher. There's a lot of confidence going on with the Geraldton combination at the moment. It was perfectly weighted by Shane. Just dropped under. So same again was the call from Tim down to Greg and he said yep. How good can he go with the same again? Looks like he's just going to drop it under with this one. Impeccable weight. Yeah, yeah great weight and it's a, it's, it is another bowl in the head so. He looked good little home to catch it if they do slice. So Michael's shot here do you think Clive? Forehand? I think so. I think he'll be looking to just get down off that last yellow bowl. He can just fall inside that. And he could easily count just off the edge of that. There you go. There you go. That's, that's why we're sitting here. They're going to play the back end. Yep. You did draw me into the forehand though, Doug. <laughs> it was a leading question. You had a 50% chance of getting that right, Clive. <laughs> But he can sit that, sit the yellow. Well, I'll tell you what, this is not far away. What a great shot that is. Well, that is perfection right there from Mike Ford and fell over. That is perfection. You can see why I played the backhand, Doug. <laughs> of course he played the backhand. Yes, yeah. Why would he play the forehand? <laughs> I apologise for that. But, um, <laughs> so we'll see how this one goes. It's a backhand again. He's reaching. But he's just going it. Easy enough to do. But with perfect weight. Yeah. It's another, it, is, it is another one around the place for them. But uh, they need to move that front bowl now and give themselves a look at this. Ten, ten, yeah. ten one down. They can't afford to drop another one or two here. Uh, sometimes it might mean you have to play a more attacking shot when you may not have otherwise done so, but uh, they've got to start bridging this gap. Of course, there's still a few events coming up on the uh, on the calendar. I notice the state triples is now open for entry, so if you're looking to get in in and uh, have a crack at a state title, state triples still to come. Wim women's hundred up. Yep. Over sixties mixed. Pairs. If you're looking for any of that, just head to bowlswa.com.au, head to the events section and go to event entry and you can check out all those events that are still coming up and get yourself in them and have a, have a bit of a crap before the season's out. And so, see, Greg's reaching. Oh, he's crashed. Well, that mightn't be the worst. That no. might have moved that out the way a little bit. They just need to change the shape of that. You need to change it with that, with that bowl, but... We'll see, Tim. Tim's been bowling well. It's sort of moved it in the way and out the way and away. Look, it's sort of, it's now in the way of a really aggressive drive, but it's, it's allowed that swing shot a little bit more, which we've probably seen more of from Tim rather than a big ag aggressive drive in his game. Shane will be keen not to finish anything jack high here. Doesn't want to draw up and finish anything that, that fattens the, the target up. In in fact, he's he's short. It wouldn't surprise me if he was trying to block that back up again. Tim's weighing up his options. All he knows is one thing he needs to change that head. At the very least, he's got to move that front bowl, that front brown bowl off the front of the jack. Give himself a look at something with the last... He's pretty keen on it. He's still watching. Can he still avoid the front? Oh. oh. Monster effort. Well, he has given that front bowl a little turn. He's probably got to look at the jack now at least, which he didn't have before that. 
So Shane's up to the head. He knows how significant this ball in the context of the game. Two balls left in the ninth then. And while they're looking at that, this Saturday, Sunday, is the Interzone Women's Round Robin up in Port Denison. Perfect. Up there on their new synthetic greens. Yes, I'll be venturing up there early tomorrow morning with the badges in hand if um, Faye's listening. So <laughs> for... Tim Stevens is another ex-golfer from Wongan Hills. Robin Higgins letting us know that. Very keen, very keen players, Robin, as well. Yes, yes she uh, knows how to put a bowl down, does Robin. And Anthony Burnham letting us know that Shane and John were great with Dante in the fours. All the boys were in his all the boys were in his first country week. Little Dante from uh, from down there does a great does a great job down there from Harvey. Still reckon he's got one of the best techniques I've seen for a for a certainly for a young player. His technique's perfect. He's been well coached. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. Well, this is close. Is it going to get down to the jack? Oh, oh just wow. on the outside. A fantastic effort. But it'll be two more to Geraldton, and they lead it 12-1 with just five ends to play. So if you're going to talk about Harvey, we've got the perfect man coming into the seat yeah, in Ross Warburton. Let's, so let's bring him country in. Director. Thanks, thanks, Doug. Full bottle on all that neck of the woods. So 12-1 the lead after nine ends. So remembering this is a 14-end final, so five ends to play. As we welcome in Pulse WA Country Director, Ross Warburton. How are you, Ross? Good, good, Clive. Very well. Very, very good. Yeah, I was just uh, uh, Anthony Anthony Burnham coming through there with a comment from Harvey, and, of course, we saw firsthand the wonderful work that Anthony himself did down there at Harvey just a few weeks ago with... Uh, with his 24-hour uh, bowls challenge that he did. Yeah, that was uh, very good. Uh, I actually played in it with Linda, my, my uh, wife, who um, has control at the moment of the um, academy side. Yes. And Dante and a few of the young ones there have been asked to sort of trial, and Linda's taken them under an umbrella, and they're doing quite well. Yeah, he did a great job down there at Harvey, of course, raising money for uh, for Calvin Rogers, who, of course, took part in Country Week as well, uh, made his way through a couple of events. But, yes. Uh, yeah, and uh, we're still uh, our fingers crossed for, for Calvin from down there in Harvey to still maybe get a run with the uh, with the Jackaroos at the Commonwealth Games. Yeah, it's uh, probably 50-50 uh, at this stage. He um, is a lot better and um, sort of hot off the press. Linda's having a meeting with him this morning to work out what the prognosis is and what going forward, because it's getting close for Karen Murphy to make a decision on right. who's in the team. So yep. that may be come out in in the near future. So we'll we'll certainly we'll find fingers out. crossed in that in that area. We'd love to see uh, well, we love to see West Aussie, don't we? Yes. Um, yes. Yes. Well, there we go. Nice a nice bowl there from Greg Slavin. And he's beaten Mike to the jack. Um, probably the first time we've seen him beat Mike to the jack for a little while. But Mike's still got one to reply. Green's running very nice, Clive. It's um, a credit to Ian to present this for oh, Country Week. There's not a no. blemish. There's not a blemish on the green. It's perfect. Um, one of the issues we do have is greens, course, but you know you can't be playing pennants in Perth and getting greens ready for country week all at once so to have a green like this is for the finals is brilliant of course a lot of uh, a lot of country bowls now is played on synthetic uh, synthetic greens uh, Ross is, uh, I think the last count I did in country areas it's about 83% now synthetic yes yep, it's getting up there um, there's probably two or three reasons one is water um, and also green keepers 
a lot of clubs, especially in the wheat belt, are not expanding to any great extent. And of course, the cost of greenkeepers is going up, so they've got no choice but to get help to put a synthetic in to keep that cost down. So it's uh, starting to spread amongst all, even on the down the southwest, where water's not a big issue, but um, it's getting greenkeepers to keep a high standard up, which is the big problem. And um, yeah, the, the latest model. Uh, synthetic out the gold fleck is certainly coming to the top it's brilliant to play on of course exception to the rule <laughs> Geraldton boys are still up there playing <laughs> on grass so uh, that's where they'd, they'd be loving this uh, this beautiful grass growing no doubt well go back five odd years and one fella had I think they had five grass now they've got two synthetics up there and um, so it is changing and uh, yeah, like I say, the cost of uh, greenkeepers is prohibitive now, and um, a lot of clubs are going with that synthetic. Well, perhaps a little, little bit of a looser end than what we've seen so far from from all the players. This is just going to come up a little bit short for Shane as well. So this is an opportunity now for uh, Tim to really look to capitalise, get another one in there, hold a couple, and really it's now or never. Five ends to score. Uh, 11 shots to get the score back to level. Uh, it's, it is now or never for the Eaton combination. Yeah, Eaton can't afford to uh, drop any more now. They need to reduce that damage. Well, Tim just needs to avoid the front here. He's done that. Well, he caught a little edge, but that'll do. That's uh, That'll be a couple. Another successful country week, Ross. Must be yes. very pleased again. Uh, month Great ago. entries again. A month ago, I was very nervous. We weren't even sure it was going to go ahead, were <laughs> yeah. we? You know. I had a few phone calls. Is it? Isn't it? And so I was, did I. Mm. You know, what do you do? You just can't do much. You can only uh, go by government regulations, and yeah, every day was a bonus that we didn't hear anything different come out. And uh, yeah, we're at the pointy end now, which is great. Yeah, it's good to see the two Eaton boys here. I've actually played against them. Played, saw them start their bowls ten odd years ago, and and um, yeah, they've really improved. Yeah, we've got a little bit of a, a mixture of you know out of the fourteen players that are left today, you know the two fours combinations, two pairs combinations, and the two singles. We've got a real blend of experience and a couple of couple of players that we perhaps haven't seen so much of. It's, it, it's the beauty of Country Week. Yeah, and uh, you know, just talking to Matty France before I got the earphones on. Um, yeah, he he was sort of getting a bit worn out um, towards the weekend and didn't know whether he would keep it going. But he's over the hill, he reckons, and he's ready for a good final. So it is. He's bowled uh, nine days straight. Going to be so. an interesting <laughs> final because neither of neither of those players are shy to play attacking shots. That's right. Um, it's going to be a very, very very interesting singles final, and that'll be coming up. That will be coming up next. Probably we did have scheduled for about eleven thirty, but it might be a little bit later than that by the time this game finishes. Or it depends how this scoreline goes, yes. I suppose. But. Um, Justin Hooper suggesting watch out next year the Meerkats will be in the finals. The Meerkat. The Meerkats. <laughs> Boulder, of course. Yeah. Now, well, this is going to come up short. So, looks like it's two at the moment to the yellow disc bowls of Eaton, although the blue and yellow, I guess, if you like. Blue and yellow against... The brown and orange, that's what we've got for you. They both pairs have got a bit of protection at the back if they happen to move the kitty. And that'll be a big issue which way it goes, I think, to determine if they do hit it, who ends up with shot. Well, this is going to be a big weight from Shane Judas in there. One of the... Draw line, draw line pretty much blocked off, so he's going big weight and he's missed... Just peeled a back bowl out. So I guess the thing is that last blue bowl of uh, of Greg Slavin sort of got in the draw line on the back end. And the forehand draw has been tough with the uh, with the breeze. So 
I guess that's where the uh, the big weights come from. But this is an opportunity now for yeah. Tim. He can sneak another couple in here. Probably needs to get one around the back instead of on the side. I reckon he'll be happy wherever it lands, Ross. They've got to get they've got to get scores. They've got to get numbers. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking, you know, the foot behind. Yeah. Don't, don't leave a target on the outside. Needs it to pull up now. Are we going to see big white again? Yes, we are. Close up. Well, he's got the lot. God. What a shot that is. He got the lot. God, what a brilliant shot. Well, he's been. He's left Geraldton holding. Probably only two. I think yeah. the blue bowls. I think the blue back bowls would beat the front. But mm. uh, well, this is huge now for Tim. He's got room. This could be the turning point of the game this end. I think. Right. First thing he needs is a clear run. He's got that. Now he just needs to pull up. He's done that. Great bowl, Tim. Well, the Eaton boys will be breathing a sigh of relief. They've doubled their score. It's 12-2. Ten shots required to uh, to draw the match and take us to an extra end with four ends to play. 12-2 the lead to our Geraldton combination of Shane Judici Nan and Mike Ford as we uh, have a word from our wonderful partners at AFGRI. buy a John Deere lifestyle tractor or ride-on mower, you join the John Deere family. And that means more than just owning a piece of our equipment. It's the dependable support of your local dealer, backed by a global network dedicated to innovation and quality. Call into your local AFGRI equipment today. We've rolled out the green carpet for you. Welcome back to the Osborne Park Bowls Club, where we are in the final stages of our Country Week Pairs Grand Final, brought to you by Afgri and Henselite. And, well, they tried to change the length again here, the Eaton boys, and again that jack's just come up a little bit shorter than perhaps they would have liked. They really needed to take an opportunity to stretch this ride out and maybe pick up a, a little bit of a number. And... A little bit of insult to injury, dropping short with that first bowl as well. So, advantage back to Geraldton with Mike Ford about to deliver his first bowl at this end. They just haven't been able to grab the opportunities that have come their way, and Ross. And there hasn't been a lot of them given to them by by Shane and Mike. And as we see Mike all over this jack once more. As as we know, bowls consistency's number one. And if you can keep that length correct, whether you're right on the kitty or each side, but it's that length and you drop one short and then drop one long, um, like what's happened probably now, that's where it can uh, fall apart. But uh, can feel a bit lonely out there yeah. when your opposition's nailing yeah. it and you're just yeah. not quite finding it. And obviously, um, you know, Tim and Greg have played some fantastic bowls to, to get through uh, all this way. And... Um, that's where that change of length was so important here. They would have loved that jack to roll another three or four metres and really change it up a little bit. But still some support coming through, hoping for a comeback. And Michael's a very experienced bowler in this level. Well, he's an he's excellent been... singles player as yes. well, isn't he, Ross? And yes. that's what we're seeing with his... You know, good singles players generally make pretty good leads in, uh, yes. in a pairs format. Yeah, he's a perfect lead. For any comp, any top side, um, he knows how to get the close ones, and those that do a lot of skippering realise that a good lead is a very valuable player. I think what we've seen is that you know 
Shane and Mike have just been able to keep the pressure on the whole time. Yes. I say that, you know, the Eden boys have struggled to take their opportunities. They really haven't had many opportunities. The, um, the no. Geraldton boys have been very, very strong throughout. Yes. Really, if they hadn't, you know, an end where they haven't had at least one or two bowls very close to the jack. And they haven't um, played some aggressive shots, as we just saw in the last end. But when you do play aggressive shot and convert, it does uh, take the wind out of the opposition's sail. And um, here yeah, Shane played that good up shot, which converted two down to two up. Yeah, Alan, unfortunately, um, Alan just commenting on the crowd, unfortunately we're not allowed uh, to have uh, crowds. So uh, there is a crowd of people watching inside the clubhouse. We uh, say hello to all of them because they're watching our feed from inside the clubhouse, but unfortunately there, uh, there are limitations on, on what we can do around the green uh, due to the current COVID requirements. So certainly not a rule that uh, that is Bowls WA's rule. It's the, it's the government rules, and unfortunately we, uh, we must follow them. When I say unfortunately, well, it's not necessarily unfortunate. We just must follow them. You've got no choice. And yes. We, you do feel a bit lonely out here today, but... Uh, I think the standard of bowls hasn't changed. It's quite high, very high standard. So for those who are watching on the streaming, you know, I hope you're enjoying it. And it's just the great thing about the streaming is it does allow us to bring... I, I think Country Week's a really important one because you've got a lot of players that would have played in Country Week uh, and have to head home. Either they've, they've lost games or they have to head back. They can still keep an eye on what's going on in the event that they played in. And of course, it's the opportunity for family and friends of the players that we're watching to uh, to see the game firsthand, rather than have to rely on uh, you know score lines and things like that. They can actually tune in and watch the game firsthand. So, yeah, I think the decision the board made a few years ago to go to a high level streaming um, was the best way to go because we were attempting to keep it keep the cost down, but using the cheaper mobile phones and that didn't give a complete signal, it kept dropping out, so we've made a decision to pick the, the major events in the year and spend the money accordingly. In the WA environment, Ross, the climate is tricky. Um, yeah. Often the days are hot. I mean, we've got a 39 degree day today, and the, you know, the professional cameras will cope with that, yes. but the, the lesser cameras won't, and, um, and that can be a, a, a big challenge. I know it's frustrating for people at times that want to see the action, and I think what we're providing for you right now is a, a really high standard product, which yes. is great. Yep. Mm. Yeah, Wayne, Wayne saying for a big sport like footy or basketball at half capacity. Yeah, yep. well, that's <laughs> we don't make the rules, Wayne. Yeah. Oh, I think uh, technology, we all... Just about every day there's something new come come out with technology and I think we'll get used to this streaming and live stuff where you can access it wherever you are uh, to watch whatever sport you want to. And, um, yeah, you've got to present a good product to get people to watch. Plenty of good stuff coming up, actually. I mean, we yeah. see a lot of uh, a lot of great streaming from the Eastern States and yes. uh, Bowls Australia's got some, some big events coming up like the Australian yeah. Champion of Champions and the Australian Championships. And, of course, entries are open for the Australian Open, so... If you want to get over there and have a bit of a crack at the Australian Open, wonderful, wonderful yeah. event. Now, what's Mike Ford got here? It looks like he's just cruising around the back. Going for a bit of cover, I think, because mm -hmm. uh, Tim's probably not going to be short with his first bowl. Let's see if he can move that kitty and get out in the open, I'd say, or next to his yellow there at about 10 o'clock. The thing I love about the streaming as well, Ross, is the games are there forever then as well. Like you can go back and look through yes. um, the archives that are on the Facebook pages and watch games from years gone by, and it's it's uh, it's fantastic. Get them up on the big screen. Yep. Pauline Bourne enjoying the coverage. Good, good on you, Pauline. So what can Tim do to try and turn this head their way? Big weight. On the back end, he's got one bowl out. Well, so one down, two seconds now for Eaton, but Shane Judas Nairn 
You probably won't want to lock one right next to these red bowl to Michael's bowl. He want to be short or around the back so he doesn't make a big target. But um, no, he's left a gap. That's not too bad. Both bowls will still go. I think we'll see weight again from yeah. Tim. We're switching to the forehand, so does that mean no, he's still going big weight? Yep. Wants both bowls here. Edge of one down to the other. Well, he got one what? clean. Yeah. He may have still made two. Shane still has one bowl to okay. play. Yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Greg, Greg was getting the measure out, but uh, yeah. just a bit soon. Shane's still got a chance to, uh, to to make his last move. So indication of that is they don't know who's got shot. We didn't see him look at the second one, so it might just be a measure for shot. Well, if Shane gets a clear run here, he's not far away. Oh, he's right. crashed into the crashed. front. So, Greg will get the tape out and we'll find out here. Well, it's definitely one. Okay. So, definitely one to Eaton. And it looks like two. 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 Two shots to Eaton, so it's a couple of ends yeah. on the trot for them. Twelve shots to four is the lead to our general in combination of Shane Judas Nan and Mike Ford. That's with three ends to play. Right, now will we see this long end that we've been craving? This yep. um looks like it. Yeah, Tim Stevens is the captain of Eaton Bowling Club at the moment. He's done a good job for the last couple of years. Uh, very well respected. Um, and knows a lot about sport, as Clive mentioned earlier. He was a good golfer. Yes. And his brother, Matt, was a Swan Districts footballer, league footballer. So um, there's a bit of sporting history in the family. Um, so, yeah, it's probably no surprise that he's up here at the pointy end. All right, well, we've got the jack a little bit further. So here we go. 12-4. Three ends to play. Two or three here for Eaton would make things interesting. Yeah, I think this is the crucial end now. If Eaton can win this one, they've got a chance. Yeah, I don't know whether we've got an answer to this question, uh, Ross, but we'll ask it. Jenny's asked, do you know why the, the reason why the men play 2-2-2-2 two, 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 and the women will play three bowls straight for country week pairs? Um, I can give you a bit of background of uh, what's happened over the last few years. We've put out some um, questionnaires at country week. We didn't do any this year because over the last few years most of them have been the same questions. But last year we put out a questionnaire to see if we wanted to change it to three bowls like the ladies do. And I think it was 80% give or take to about 20% give or take wanted to keep it as 2-2-2-2 two, 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 two. and the ladies were the opposite 80% to keep it 3 ball pairs okay. and 20% to leave it at 3 so the numbers have it the numbers have it so we there's no good keep going and asking the same question so we've just kept it as the same so yeah it's, the bowlers are keen and I'm talking men now are keen to keep it this way it's uh, and really, I suppose, the only disadvantage is for older people who find it hard to do all the walking. But, um, yeah, that's that's the way it is. Thanks for that, mate. And uh, Greg, with a 
good second bowl there. Just still probably about a foot short of the jack. So still room for Mike. But we've seen a little bit of a shift here. Greg just managing to get on top a little bit. Yeah. Where Mike's had sway most of the way through the match. So just a little, a little run here coming from the Eaton duo. Ends are a problem. They've only got three to play. Eight shots required to get us to a drawn situation. If we draw, then we would go to an extra end. I think if the Beaton boys had had the mat a little bit earlier, they would have made the ends a bit longer, and maybe that could have been the turning point of the game. We'll find out after this end. Now, Tim's weight looks good here. Very good. Very good bowl. Well, just a little bit of momentum going the way of, of Eaton now. But is it too late? Mm. Two shots at the moment. And they've got the Geraldton boys thinking a little bit more now. And this is the difference, Ross, when you... When you Drop a couple in there. It's now not just about we'll just pick whatever hand we want to play and draw close. Now they've got to start thinking. They've got to look at strategy now. What are Eaton going to do instead of Eaton worrying about what Geraldton are going to do? It's tables turned, but... And it's a good effort from Shane, but just left it on the wide side. Yeah, Tim's probably got to decide now whether he gets another one in the head or he just puts one around the back. For oh. that little up shot. When you're twelve four behind, mate, you're not going around the back at no, this stage, I don't no, think. I think you've got to you got to crowd the head and hope that they miss. And um, that's that's right. That's the only option you got really. They need <coughs> a three or a four. Uh to really put some pressure on on this end. Now Tim's weight looks pretty handy again. Well, this oh, is a great shot. He's got two. Yeah. Well that's brilliant bowls. Yeah. And covered up the jack. Yep. Don't go anywhere. It's two ends to play after this, and it could be game on. Eddie Dodd joining us. And Eddie, big weight coming here from Shane Judas Nan. Big weight it is. Ooh, you got no the front result. One. Well. Still a good shot on for for Mike Ford as well to play. You know, that can't see can't see Mike going big weight, but no. just that little swinger up there on the back yes. end, yep. split split yep. the two yellow bowls. So can't can't afford to be shy here. The Eaton pairing, um, Greg must try and get another one in the area there. And even if he was to turn the outside yellow, he could make this look a whole lot better. better. Even better than sitting with three right now. I think Michael indicated to Shane about the front blue there. Hitting that would go straight between the two yellows and take them both out. But whether Michael will try that. But um, I think Greg's got to get that yellow one just around behind if they can. I'd be surprised if uh, if Mike plays that. No, it is on, but I'd be surprised if he plays that with the style of game he plays. Now, yeah, yeah. what's Greg got? He's clearing the front. He needs to clear the... Brown, he's done that. Oh, might be handy. Well, won't be miles out of the count, that. that a bit hard from our angle to, to tell mm. whether that counts. Uh, mm, it might be close, so still at least three. Even uh, Shane just had a look at that, so... Eric Johannes watching on. He's probably on his way down, way across from uh, Kalgoorlie. Play pennants tomorrow. Yeah, I think. And Ruth, uh, Ruth Bevington. Hi, Ruth. Most country clubs, I think, have got another game of pennants after Country Week. Now it is bigger weight from Mike Ford. Well, he's cleared the front. So the blue yeah. bowl, the blue bowl was the target, yeah, Ross, but yeah. no result. Oh, it stayed in too. I think we might have an umpire to check this bowl. 
Oh, he's playing the ball. He needs to hang on. Um, well, she's agreed to let him play that ball by the look of it, and then they'll check. Yeah. It's out is the call from Sue, by the look of it. Now, can Greg get down inside this orange bowl? Needs to get right down now. He's missed. Oh, that's a, not a bad spot. Yeah. Gives him a chance. Out is the call, so yeah. that bowl will go out at the back. So Now, I'm not completely convinced that Greg didn't count with that back bowl, so... Yeah. It, it could be three shots again right now. It's close. Even the one out at th on the side there could be in the count. Still a chance, yeah. yeah. Wind whipping through. Yeah, wind picked up a bit. Still, still that easterly. We are expecting an early-ish sea breeze according to the forecast, so... Right, it's weight from Mike Ford again. This is tight. So, once he got off the front... Well... Oh. Ooh. Wow. Might be a good thing we didn't have audio on Tim Stevens there as that ball went through. Yeah. <laughs> but just from uh, watching his reaction, I don't think the words would have been great. No. <laughs> but they, they have still got shot, but uh, certainly not. Uh, they needed yeah. they needed this to go their way, so... As they say in bowls, when you're down, you've got to make something happen. And that's what Michael did. A little bit of luck, but that goes with bowls. So, backhand it is for Tim now. <laughs> Andrew Jones indicating he might have clapped that. <laughs> Seen that first hand, Andrew. Jonesy. Now, is this going to get down? Looks like it will. Oh, great bowl, Tim. Great yes, shot. Great shot. Well, they're hanging in there. Well, we're yeah. not entirely sure how many they're holding. It's got to be at least two. two. Yeah. Yeah, Greg's back bowl could be in the count as well. Uh, not anymore. Oh, it's going to run past. No, nah, it? it's a very good bowl, though, from Shane. Yeah. That's second shot. Could be second, yep. I think Tim has no choice but to try and land on that, make, yep. make three. At least. So nothing for short here. Land that ball, put some pressure back on Shane. Halfway down, he's going to make it with weight. His direction will be the big key factor. Needs it to get down. Yes. Yeah, they, Gerald and boys have got second shot. I'm a little surprised he didn't change to the backhand here, but this is just still a good shot on the forehand. Just wouldn't want to be playing any weight and get an edge of his own, that's all. Doesn't want the edge of his own. He is. He's pushed his own out. Well, he Ooh. might have got lucky there. That was the only problem with the forehand. Yeah. Uh, backhand, he had a chance to sit the ball or trail to his own. I'm probably a little surprised they didn't change. but uh, Michael's only signalling one. One down, that is. Mm, looks like two. Yeah. Two. Two it is. So, well, 12-6. Two ends to play. You're... Yeah, <laughs> you've got a chance, haven't you? There's certainly a chance. Yeah. Yeah. One well, at least three on this end for yeah. if yeah. you're an Eden supporter. Yep. Matt's back. Greg's put the mat back again. Going to be another long end. Don't forget, singles final coming up shortly after this match concludes. That is Peter Cole from Pinjarra taking on Matty France, our defending champion from Meriden. And then after that singles final, we'll have the fours final for you. An all-south battle. Bunbury and Brunswick taking on Emu Point. Correct. Some experienced players going around in yep. that one. John Sharp, Matty yeah. Mitchell, Ian Cartledge. 
Darren Callan Darren played Callan, yeah. Premier League up here quite a few years ago. It certainly did. Um, where did he? Was that Yokoin? Uh, Yokoin, yes. Yep. And Tony DeBello used to uh, be in Perth. Played at uh, Carlisle Lathlane Ooh. years ago. Carlisle Lathlane. That, you know, it was a beautiful green. It's and a beautiful... What they've done with that area now is actually yeah. beautiful, but yeah. I preferred the greens. Yeah, <laughs> they were magnificent. <laughs> um, and Stan Hunter, the lead for the, the composite side, the inside, is a um, well-renowned bo- renowned bowler in the southwest. Been around for quite a few years. Well, interesting split between the first two bowls. Who can nail this jack now? A metre correction for either player would do the job. Well, he's just going to track past, but it's enough for shot. That's right. Yes, you'd know that force combination reasonably well. I'm, I'm taking it. Uh, yeah, I do. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be an interesting game. It'll be all to do with tactics. Um, Ian Cartledge, Darren Kellen, Stan Hunter, okay. and Tony DeBello to take on John Sharp, Matt Mitchell, Doug Wright, and Steve Tufney. We all know what John Sharp can do. There's Mike Ford. And He's back on the jack once more. And uh, Ian Cartage, I think, could 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 stay with him, I think. Um, it'll be the other three, I think, that'll determine a lot of the, the heads if they get balls in the head. Yeah, the pressure's on the Eaton boys now that uh, Michael's drawn this shot. It's, uh, if they happen to hold this end, it's seven in front. Yeah, seven can be done, but you don't want to be, lo- you don't, no. you don't want to be looking for no, it. No, <laughs> um, And if they get another one, well, it might be handshakes, depending on what the Eaton boys want to do. Sorry, Charles. Stephen Tuffley. Sorry, I was mispronouncing that. Tuffley rather than Tuffney. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, my apologies. Yes. As uh, Doug mentioned earlier on this morning, that Eaton have got a brand new clubhouse. Opened uh, towards the end of last year. Yeah, great little setup down there now. Um, they are part of a sporting club now, but everything seems to be uh, going to plan. They uh, certainly not reducing their numbers. They're, they've got quite a big club, Eaton. Um, yeah, all goes well for the that area. Yeah, they've done some wonderful... Um, actually, we were talking about that before you came on here, weren't we? Yeah. And uh, that, that new clubhouse, and it's just a fantastic, uh, fantastic for the yeah. area. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's uh, something they needed. The the old clubhouse had issues, and uh, yeah, they've ended up with a great, great new uh, clubhouse. Greg going for a little running shot here. We're actually very lucky with a lot of the uh, facilities we have around right, right through the country areas, yes. aren't we, Ross? I mean, I, I obviously 
do a lot of travel around with my regional bowls manager yes. role and yeah. get to see some of those wonderful facilities firsthand. And yeah, I had a bit of a discussion with the Harvey Shire, and um, when the COVID struck us in 2020, so virtually two years ago, just about to today, mm. um, the Harvey Shire realised that bowling clubs were going to be a good shot here. Like well, bowling clubs were, one around the place. were going to be a source of social social interaction with people because we couldn't travel. And uh, I think a lot of other shires realised the same thing, that uh, we had to keep the bowling clubs functioning to allow people to get out and communicate and talk to each other. Now, more weight here. This isn't far away if he clears the front. Ooh, well, he's yes. got the ball out, so yep. good shot. Gives him a little opportunity. One shot it is at the moment to Eaton. <laughs> Matt Mitchell making the comment, geez, I hope it doesn't rain or get to 40. <laughs> it just shows you a little bit of a strange day today. It's a <laughs> forecast of 39 or 40 degrees, yet a storm forecast for later in the day. Yeah, I'm not sure whether Doug mentioned anything about the men's health. We're having games and... Spe uh, great shot here, sorry. Yeah, seminars. Great yeah, shot. great shot. Yeah. What a way to reply to uh, yep. to Greg. Yes, there's been some wonderful uh, yep. wonderful men's regional health, uh, regional health initiatives. Yep. Yep. Yes. And there's one on it binning up uh, middle of next month. Um, I've been asked to play um, with Ross Nitchburn. He's moved down to the southwest, and he's one of the Ross leading. Went, Ross went well in uh, yes. throughout this week, didn't he? Yeah, hmm. and he's one of the well people who are pushing with Bowls WA to get clubs to um, have these talks. We had twenty thousand dollars given to us to spread out thousand dollars per club to help per region per, per region in per, the country areas per region. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, so the uh, yeah, Ross has taken it on his back now even though he's only been down the south living there for a very short time he's uh, taken on his back and he's arranged a game of bowls at binning up next month which is great now more weight here from Tim but unable to connect now suddenly we're in a situation where if uh, if the Geraldton boys can claim three, yeah. three here in the end of game mm. It's probably unlikely at the moment because I think you're more looking at the back. Very handy ball there. <laughs> We've got... Uh, Standing room only over on the rooftops over there. <laughs> yeah, they're giving us a wave as well. <laughs> I think the wave was just too late for the camera. Yeah. <laughs> they're loving the coverage from over on the rooftops. There we go. Now we're yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> Like watching, uh, like, like when you watch the cricket from England, yes, isn't yeah. it? They're always out on the balconies yeah, in and the high rise. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and the boys looking after us there with the camera. That's good. So this is big now. Very big. Contact must be made. So, what's he look like? He's solid weight. Crinching a bit. He needs to get under the front. Just caught Slow the edge down. of the front. So, no result there. That will now give Shane the opportunity to draw one more. I think it's only one at the moment to Geraldton. So, it may not be the three on offer. I think the blue bowl beats the front brown. Hmm. Although... Our angle isn't certain of that. Yeah, our angle certainly puts you off. It looks like they're holding two, but... Right, so... 
Shane with his final bowl. I think his weight's pretty good. Right in the area. That is just going to go too far right. to count. So we'll just see whether it's one or two. One right. it is. Only one. Yep. Side on bowls watching, Ross. It's uh, it's an art form, mate. It is an art form, yes. <laughs> one it is. 13-6 is the lead with one end to play. We'll take a quick word from uh, Afgari and we'll be back to cover the final end. buy a John Deere lifestyle tractor or ride on mower, you join the John Deere family. And that means more than just owning a piece of our equipment. It's the dependable support of your local dealer, backed by a global network dedicated to innovation and quality. Call into your local AFGRI equipment today. We've rolled out the green carpet for you. And you have it, the final end to be played here. It's a 13-6 lead to Shane Judas Nan and Mike Ford from Geraldton over Tim Stevens and Greg Slaven. Question come in for you for you from David Goddard. Uh, Ross, which club is winning the battle for Ross Ditchburn services next year? <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for that sort of comment. Um, <laughs> Brunswick, he's been to Brunswick a few times and played a few social games in the last few weeks. Uh, Binning up have been asking him to play out there, and uh, but I think uh, Eaton might have got the the run at this stage. So okay. I've been told. And um, uh, and Glenn Windle's calling for a power play here for uh, for yeah, Eaton. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right, final end of the match. Seven shots required for Tim Stevens and Greg Slaven. There's probably better positions to be in, but you never know. No, that's right. <laughs> and Mike Ford looks to have. Done yeah. it again. What a what a yeah. look! He had a couple of ends in the middle where he perhaps just yep. went off a little bit. Allowed him but to get in. It's been very yes. very solid. Yes. Yeah, I'd just like to mention Afgri. You know the support they've shown to that Country Week. It's um, fantastic to have a major business from the country putting their hand up to sponsor Country Week. Certainly is. And, um, yeah, I just like to thank them. Yeah, just so active out there. When you drive when yes. you drive out into the country areas, you just see AFGRI everywhere. They're so yeah. active. And yeah. Yep. All right, Mike Ford looking to add another here. Wouldn't even mind if it just trickles past, and that's exactly what's going to do. Yeah, that's two well-positioned yes. bowls. Yep. Defending seven. So this will be another title on the list for Mike Ford, assuming that... This one doesn't want to go in the ditch, I don't think. Assuming Otherwise we're in trouble. No, that'll no, stay up. But, so uh, yeah, assuming that we don't get something very strange happen here... Um, of course, Mike won the singles in 2016, right here. Yes. At Osborne Park. And I believe for Shane, this will be his first Country Week title. Certainly will. So, Tim just looking to have enough bowls in the same. They just need to have enough bowls in the same area to have a chance. And the yeah. the problem they've got is they're all split at the moment, in terms yep. of. Um, there's no grouping that they can sort of look to get to the jack two. Yeah, it's going to be very hard to get eight. That well, of back course, ball. of course, it's going to be you know seven, mm. seven or eight shots is always you need yeah. everything to go right and yeah. and more. Um, nice bowl there from Shane. That's enough to count. I suppose if you were game enough, you could put them all at the back and then go for the kitty. Yeah. Um, and if the opposition's silly enough to fall for that, then easier uh, said than done. <laughs> yes. yes. Mm. <coughs> Do 
Shane just giving an update to the guys standing on the roof watching. Yeah. <laughs> giving him a kind update to say that uh, it's last in. You can you can see uh, you can see in the background there one of the guys standing on the roof. He looks like a fairly young bloke, so he's uh, probably got good eyesight yes. <laughs> from there. I wonder if it's his house. I wonder. <laughs> he's probably got his fo mobile phone in his pocket listening to our uh, broadcast. <laughs> That's why he's uh, looking, I think. <laughs> How else would he have known we're, we're playing here? Frankie says a couple of Geraldton boys who played hockey with Shane. Well, there you go. Oh, right, eh? Is that, I, I assume he's talking to the uh, talking about the guys that are standing on the roof. Roof, yeah. Uh, great shot there from Mike yeah. once more. He really has put together a very, very good game. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Take nothing away from the Eaton boys. Uh, Michael Ford's been in this position a few times, so he knows what pressure's all about, and this will do the Eaton boys a world of good in their bowling adventures going forward. Yeah, certainly. So it doesn't look like the Eaton team are going to try and kill the end it doesn't seem like that although still a few bowls to come as I say that don't try and get to it and sit it is the call so I don't know I think in this situation a miracle can't happen unless you unless you let it so right. potentially trying to kill the end isn't the worst thing A great effort from Greg, but no result there. There is, there is a little bit of uh, value for them yeah. out the back, but not nearly what they need. So here we go. It could be just four bowls away from a title here for our Geraldton team. Singles final coming up next. Peter Cole versus Matthew France. And then our fours final will complete our day's coverage of the AFGRI Ooh, I think that 2022 was a Country Week finals. I think that was a deliberate short one, I think, to stop the drive. Stop the drive. It's got a little bit more than draw weight. It's going to try to rattle in there, I think. It's got contact on something. Oh, he's, he's got the jack all the way to the back. Oh. Well, he's made at least three. Oh, I think he might be in the ditch. Oh, I don't think so. Should pull up. Ooh. Yep, just Did. pulls up on the edge. Yep, good ball. Good ball. Might not be shot, but it won't matter. No. Well, it's a nice finish, but that will conclude... Our match and yeah. our champions, it looks like, uh, not quite sure, one down I think was the signal from Mike Ford. So 13-7 will be our final scoreline. But our Country Week champions for 2022 in the pairs discipline, yeah. uh, Shane Judisnan and Mike Ford from Geraldton. Congratulations to those two. Commiserations, but well done yeah. to Tim Stevens and Greg Slavin from Eton. A uh, fantastic effort. And they won uh, four of the last five ends, but uh, that 12-2 deficit 
They say it's okay to drop ones, but they drop lots of ones, unfortunately. Mm. And uh, it was the Geraldton, Geraldton combination that felt like they had the sway throughout the match. Ross. Yeah, Eaton had to get that mat early and, and change the length because they were they have consistent length, Geraldton, because Michael got those bowls close and slowly got the ones, and I think it would have been six or seven ends where they got ones in a row. Now we will have the presentations, so don't go anywhere because we will have the presentations for you coming up very shortly. We'll just let uh, everyone get organised over there. A reminder that coming up for you we will have our singles final, which is Peter Cole from Pinjarra taking on Matthew France from Meriden. And then our fours final to complete our coverage, Ian Cartledge, Darren Kelland, Stan Hunter and Tony DeBello will take on John Sharp, Matt Mitchell, Doug Wright, and Steve Tuffley. So and that is all still to come. Um, yeah, fantastic, uh, fantastic performance. It was uh, it was, it was uh, eight of the first nine ends going the way of the Geraldton combination, and uh, they were able just to stave off that uh, that late comeback from uh, the Eaton pairing. Uh, we are just preparing for our presentations and then uh, we'll get over there uh, to those. So, um, fantastic day here at Osborne Park Bowls Club. Uh, we were treated to some uh, great bowls there uh, from both both pairings. But um, it was uh, it was the Geraldton combination of Shane, Judas Nan and... Uh, Mike Ford, that were victorious. We are going to cross to Doug Kelly, who's uh, got the presentation right there, right now. Right here. So we've just seen the completion of the the first event today. The pairs. It was sort of a great game with guys that have had a very long week. I uh, was just talking to Glenn. Then they played in the welcome fours, singles. Pairs, fours, and then the final. There's nine games alone just in the pairs to get to this point, uh, let alone all the other ones. So monster effort. Um, conditions conditions are probably getting a little bit tougher this afternoon, but uh, it was just well done. And before we start, and, and um, it's just a thank you to the officials, Sue, I see Sue, so there, Vicky, Eva, who's probably, there's Vicky over there. Well done. Uh, thankless task. Um, I know they do a great job and we appreciate it heaps. Uh, and just while we're on, thank yous to the Osmond Park Bowling Club, uh, the way they have presented the greens, uh, the surrounds, and it's just, they set the bar high, Osmond Park, they do a great job. Ian Lillyburn and his band of helpers, uh, Ian Gemmel, who'll be kicking around here, uh, it's a huge thank you from Bowls WA to make the facilities welcome and then still present them to this level that the guy, I'm sure the players may say a word or two uh, about that as we go forward. To AFGRI, who have come on board and will be on board for the next couple of years, great sponsors, uh, you know, they, they're spread right through through rural WA, it's a great fit for them, great fit for us and we do appreciate it and uh, hopefully it continues for many years. Uh, we'll move on to the actual game of bowls. So, you know, just mention what a tough week it's been. It is literally country week, and I did talk to Kerry Anderson about, imagine if we said to the city guys, we'll just play everything in one week, about our life, where things could shorten up for us a bit. But uh, firstly, so to the runners-up, Glenn and Tim from the Eaton Bowling Club, you did yourselves... Did you, Greg, sorry. Did yourselves proud. Uh, you did yourselves proud. You did your club proud. And if you come forward as, as runners-up to Men's Country Week for 2022. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, 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 Greg. Thank you, mate. Um, <coughs> On the two. <coughs> OK. Um, first of all, to Shane and Michael. Well bowled, guys. Really nice uh, display of bowls. To Greg, well done, mate. We had a big week. Who would have known that two blokes from Eaton would have got to here? So um, we're really proud of what we've done. To AFGRI, Bowls WA, Aussie Park Bowling Club, everyone else involved with the week. Um, well done, guys. Yeah, thank you. So to the winners this year, to Shane... And to Michael, uh, as Michael come off and I was shaking his hand, um, it's been bowling for 40 years. Uh, he's, as a combination, they're fantastic. But he's still excited after all this time to 
make it to the, to the final and to win it with his great mate. So to Michael and Shane, well done, boys. Come forward. Okay. Um, Eaton boys, thanks very much for the game. It's been a, been a long week, hasn't it? Um, Aussie Park Bowling Club, greens are always, always really good. Um, obviously, it takes a whole lot of organising this event. Um, Bowls WA, thanks very much for all the time and effort you put in, especially all the umpires and ladies that are out there marking all week, sitting under the hot, <laughs> hot balcony. You've done a great job. So, yeah, thanks very much to everyone. Uh, and thanks very much, Forty, oh, my, my partner. It was my pleasure. <laughs> he, um, he, is awesome. he just keeps dumping them on the jack all the time, and I have a few runs and hit, hit things occasionally, so that's basically the way it goes. <laughs> so thanks, thanks for playing with me, Forty. You're giving away our secrets. <laughs> right, so just before we move on to the singles that will be, will be played next, and we're looking forward to that as well, just a huge thank you to Peter Harris. Uh, I'd I mean, I understand and appreciate what goes on behind the scenes. Uh, in COVID times uh, and the pullouts and the changes of venues and everything else that happens during the lead, not just, not just the week, it's the lead up to it. And Peter Harris, we just, you know, we put our hands together and say thanks. And I don't think you could re actually really just give him enough thank yous. But So well done. So good luck for the next one to the guys playing in the singles. And there you have it. So there's the uh, presentation from the men's pairs, the uh, Country Week men's pairs winners, uh, Shane Judas Nan and Mike Ford from Geraldton. Deserved winners, Ross? Yes, deserved winners. They certainly jumped out of the blocks. And I think those middle ends certainly kept eating at bay. And uh, like we said earlier, once you get that sort of lead coming into the last three or four ends, you really have to work hard and it just didn't quite go Eaton's way. Alrighty, we will be back with the singles final very soon. Very soon. <laughs> uh, thank you to AFGRI and Henselite for their uh, sponsorship of our coverage and this event. It's uh, been a fantastic morning. We've still got two great clashes to come. Peter Cole from Pinjarra to take on Matty France uh, from Meriden in the singles final. There will be a new stream for that so we will catch you in a few minutes back here at Osborne Park for Country Country Week Finals Day. We're looking forward to that.